Lesson 1. Our Daily To-Do List Good morning. What's on your agenda for today? Morning. Well, I have a lot to get through. First, I need to do some grocery shopping. That's a good start. I have to go to the bank to deposit some money. After shopping, I'm planning to clean the house. It's quite messy. I understand. I have to organize my closet. It's a bit of a mess too. Then, I'll have some paperwork to tackle. Right. I need to fill out some forms for my new job. Do you have any appointments today? Yes, I have a dentist appointment in the afternoon. I have a doctor's appointment in the morning. After that, I'll stop by the post office. I should mail a package too. And then, I need to email a report to my boss. I have to reply to a few work emails as well. In the evening, I want to hit the gym. How about you? I'm planning to go for a jog in the park. I need to pick up some books from the library. Oh, I have to return some library books today. After the gym, I'm going to cook dinner. Cooking sounds great. I'll order takeout tonight. I have to pay my bills online later. I did that yesterday. I also have to make a to-do list for tomorrow. That's a good idea. I often forget things. Me too. I'm trying to be more organized. I should do some laundry too. It's piling up. I did mine yesterday, so I'm all set in that department. Lucky you. I need to run some errands, like picking up dry cleaning. I have some errands to run as well, like getting my car serviced. I want to do some gardening if I have time. I have a few plants at home too. They need watering. I'm also thinking about watching a movie tonight. That sounds relaxing. I might watch a TV show. We should catch up soon. How about this weekend? Great idea. I'm free on Saturday. Let's plan something. I need to prepare a birthday card for my friend's party. I have a birthday gift to wrap for my sister. Speaking of birthdays, I need to call my cousin to wish her a happy birthday. Don't forget to set a reminder for that. You're right. I'll add it to my to-do list. I also need to fix a leaky faucet. Handy work, huh? I have to assemble a new bookshelf. After all that, I'll relax with a cup of tea. I'll enjoy a cup of coffee. And maybe read a book. I'm planning to catch up on some magazines. I almost forgot. I need to buy a new phone charger. My phone charger is working fine, but I need to update my apps. I'm planning to spend some time in the garden with my kids. Quality time with family is important. I'll play board games with mine. We should grab a coffee one of these days. Absolutely. Let's make it happen soon. Well, I think that covers most of my to-do list today. Same here. It's going to be a busy day for both of us. Lesson 2. Everyday self-care routines. Hey, how's your self-care routine these days? It's not bad. I try to take care of myself regularly. That's good to hear. What do you usually do in the morning? I start my day with a warm shower to wake up. I do the same. I find it really refreshing. After that, I brush my teeth and use mouthwash. Maintaining oral hygiene is essential. I do that too. Then I have a healthy breakfast. Usually some fruit and yogurt. Breakfast is important. It fuels your day. I prefer oatmeal. Do you exercise regularly? Yes, I try to go for a walk or do some light stretching. I should incorporate more exercise into my routine. It helps boost your energy and mood. How about skin care? I wash my face and apply moisturizer in the morning. 
I use sunscreen too to protect my skin from the sun. That's a good idea. I often forget sunscreen. Sunscreen is crucial to prevent skin damage. In the evening, I remove makeup if I wear any. I don't wear makeup, but I use a gentle cleanser before bed. Good practice. After that, I floss and brush my teeth again. Dental care is so important. I should floss more. Then, I wind down by reading a book before sleep. I watch TV, which might not be the best for my sleep. Reading helps me relax, and it's better for sleep quality. How about your mental well-being? I practice mindfulness for a few minutes daily. That's great. It helps reduce stress. I do some deep breathing exercises. I should try that too. What about nutrition? I try to have a balanced diet with plenty of vegetables and lean protein. I need to cut back on junk food and sugar. Small changes can make a big difference. Don't forget to stay hydrated. I need to drink more water, that's true. And how do you handle stress? I listen to calming music or take short breaks. That's a good approach. I talk to friends to share my feelings. Having a support system is important, right? Absolutely. It helps you feel better. Do you get enough sleep? I often stay up late, which is not good. Sleep is vital for your overall health. Try to establish a sleep routine. I'll work on it. What about your hobbies and interests? I make time for my hobbies like painting and gardening. I used to have hobbies, but I've been neglecting them. Hobbies are a great way to relax and unwind. And how do you handle setbacks? I try to stay positive and learn from my mistakes. That's the right attitude. Self-care includes self-compassion. You're right. I need to be kinder to myself. Self-care is about nurturing your body and mind. It's a journey. I appreciate your advice. I'll work on improving my routine. You've got this. It's all about progress, not perfection. Thanks for the encouragement. I'll take small steps. That's the spirit. We can support each other in our self-care journeys. It's great to have a friend like you to share this with. Absolutely. Let's both strive for better self-care every day. Agreed. Thanks for the conversation. It's been helpful. Lesson 3. Our Daily Routines Hey, how's your daily routine these days? Oh, it's pretty busy. I wake up at 6.30 a.m. every morning. And you? I get up around 7 a.m. Do you have breakfast right away? No, I usually take a shower first. Then, I have a quick breakfast at 7.15. What do you usually eat for breakfast? I like to have cereal with milk and a cup of coffee. How about you? I prefer toast with butter and jam. So, what's next in your routine? I leave for work at 8 a.m. How about you? I leave around the same time. It's a 15-minute walk to my office. Lucky you. I have to take a 30-minute bus ride. What's your work schedule like? I work from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. How about you? I work from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. What do you do during your lunch break? I usually bring my lunch from home, so I eat at my desk. You? I often grab a sandwich at a nearby cafe with my colleagues. After work, do you have any hobbies or activities? Yes, I like going to the gym at 6 p.m. How about you? I take a yoga class around the same time. Do you cook dinner yourself? No, I often order takeout or reheat leftovers. You? I cook dinner at home. I enjoy making different dishes. That sounds great. What time do you usually go to bed? 
I aim to be in bed by 11 p.m., and you? I try to get some sleep by 10.30 p.m. It sounds like you have an early bedtime. Well, I like getting a full night's sleep. That's true. It's important to be well-rested. Absolutely. So, that's a typical day for us. Is there anything special on weekends? Weekends are more relaxed for me. I sleep in a bit and do some leisure activities. That sounds like a nice change of pace. I usually catch up on house chores on weekends. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. Indeed. But it's great to catch up and chat about our daily routines. Yes, it is. It's interesting to see how others go about their day. Lesson 4. Describing the weather. Hi, how's the weather today? It's quite nice, actually. The sun is shining. That's great to hear. I hope it stays this way. Yeah, me too. I'm planning to go for a walk later. Do you know what the temperature is? I think it's around 25 degrees Celsius. Not too hot, not too cold, just perfect. Absolutely. How about you? What do you think of the weather? Well, it's a bit windy, but I like it. It's refreshing. Wind can be nice as long as it's not too strong. Right. I don't like it when it's so windy that it messes up my hair. I can understand that. Did you check the weather forecast today? No, I didn't. Is there any rain expected? I don't think so, but it's always good to check. True. I'll do that later. By the way, have you seen any clouds? There are a few fluffy clouds in the sky, but nothing too threatening. That's good. I was worried about the rain. Well, it seems we're in luck today. Do you think it'll stay like this all week? I'm not sure, but I hope so. I have some outdoor plans. Me too. I'd hate for the weather to spoil our weekend. Let's keep our fingers crossed then. Have you been following the weather patterns lately? Not really. I just rely on the daily forecast. I've heard that we might have a mild winter this year. That would be a pleasant change. I'm not a fan of snow and cold. Neither am I. I prefer milder temperatures. It's easier to go out and enjoy activities when it's not freezing. Definitely. And speaking of that, we should plan something for the weekend. Good idea. Let's check the weather forecast and decide. Sounds like a plan. We'll have to adapt to whatever it says. That's right. It's always best to be prepared. I'm glad we can have these conversations about the weather. Me too. It's a simple topic, but it affects our daily lives. It does, and it's nice to share our thoughts and plans. Agreed. So what do you feel like doing this weekend? How about a picnic if the weather is good? That sounds perfect. I hope it stays sunny and pleasant. Lesson 5. Exploring our hometown. Hi there. Have you ever been to my hometown? No, I haven't. Tell me about it. Well, it's a small town in the countryside. Sounds lovely. What's it like? It's quite peaceful, not too crowded, and surrounded by nature. That sounds relaxing. Is there a river or lake nearby? Yes, there's a river that flows through the town. It's great for fishing. I love fishing. What's the town known for? It's famous for its delicious local food, especially the homemade pies. Yum! Any special events or festivals? We have an annual summer fair with games and live music. That sounds like a lot of fun. Are there historical sites to visit? Yes, there's an old church and a museum with local artifacts. 
I enjoy learning about history. How's the weather there? The weather is quite mild, with warm summers and cool winters. I prefer milder weather. Are there good schools? Yes, we have a few good schools, and the teachers are friendly. That's important for families. Are there any local traditions? We celebrate a harvest festival in the fall with a big feast. Sounds like a close-knit community. Any famous residents? Well, a famous author once lived here and wrote about the town. That's impressive. Are there any local parks? Yes, we have a lovely park with walking trails and a playground. Great for outdoor activities. What's the best way to get there? You can take a train or drive, and it's about a two-hour journey. Not too far, then. Are there any markets? Yes, we have a weekly market with fresh produce and handmade crafts. I love markets. How's the nightlife in your town? It's not very lively, but there are a few cosy bars and restaurants. I like a peaceful nightlife. Any local wildlife? We have a lot of birds and some deer in the nearby woods. Nature lovers would enjoy that. Any local legends? There's a legend about a ghost in the old abandoned mansion. Spooky. Any popular sports in your town? People enjoy playing football and basketball in the local park. Sports are a great way to stay active. How's the cost of living? It's affordable, and housing prices are reasonable. That's good to know. Is there a public library? Yes, we have a nice library with a wide selection of books. I love reading, so that's a plus. Any local crafts? We have a pottery workshop where you can make your own ceramics. That sounds like a unique experience. What's the local music scene like? We have a small music venue where local bands often perform. I enjoy live music. Is there a community center? Yes, we have one with various activities and classes for all ages. That's great for staying engaged with the community. Any nearby hiking trails? Yes, there are hiking trails in the nearby hills with beautiful views. I love hiking. How about public transportation? We have a bus service that connects us to nearby towns. That's convenient for commuting. Are there any art galleries? We have a local art gallery that showcases the work of local artists. I appreciate art, so I'd love to visit that. Any local superstitions? Some people believe that finding a four-leaf clover brings good luck. I'll keep an eye out for one. Is there a local newspaper? Yes, we have a small newspaper that covers local news and events. It's good to stay informed. Any famous landmarks? There's an old lighthouse on the coast that's quite iconic. Sounds like a great spot for photos. How's the healthcare system? We have a local clinic, and the nearby city has a hospital. Health services are important. Any local charities? Yes, there's a charity that helps those in need in our community. It's nice to see people helping each other. Are there any theaters? We have a small community theater that puts on plays and performances. I enjoy watching live theater. Any local cafes? We have a few charming cafes with homemade pastries and coffee. Perfect for a relaxing afternoon. What's the local transportation like? Most people use bicycles or cars to get around. Bicycling is a healthy way to travel. Are there any art festivals? We have an art festival in the summer with local artists' displays. I appreciate art, so I'd love to visit that. Any beautiful gardens? Yes, we have a botanical garden with a wide variety of plants. The gardens are so peaceful. How's the community spirit? The people are friendly, and there's a strong sense of community. That's what makes a place special. Is there a local cinema? Yes, we have a small cinema that shows the latest films. Movie nights are always enjoyable. How's the local economy? It's mostly based on agriculture and some small businesses. A diverse economy can be stable. Any historical landmarks? 
There's an old fort on the outskirts that's worth visiting. I enjoy exploring historical sites. How's the public safety? It's generally safe here, with a low crime rate. Safety is a top priority. Do you have any local traditions? We celebrate a spring festival with a parade and colorful decorations. Festivals are a great way to bring people together. Lesson 6. Plans for the future. Hey, have you thought about our future plans? Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I want to find a stable job, maybe in marketing. That sounds great. I was considering going back to school to improve my skills. Really? What field are you thinking of? I'm leaning towards computer science. It's in high demand these days. Nice choice. I'm aiming for a job that offers a good work-life balance. Me too. I value my free time and want a job that allows for personal development. I totally get that. I'm also thinking about saving money for a down payment on a house. That's a smart move. I'm planning to start investing for the long term. Investing sounds a bit complicated. Any tips? Well, diversifying your investments is crucial. Maybe we can attend a workshop together. That's a good idea. We can share what we learn and support each other. Absolutely. And speaking of support, I want to join a fitness class to stay healthy. Count me in. We can motivate each other to stay active. It's important to have a balanced lifestyle. I'm also considering learning a new language. That's ambitious. Which language are you interested in? I'm thinking of Spanish. It could open up new opportunities, especially in the job market. True. I might join you in that language journey. Learning together could be fun. Definitely. And on a personal note, I want to spend more quality time with family. I'm on the same page. Family is crucial, and creating lasting memories is priceless. Have you thought about any travel plans? Yes, I'd love to travel more. Exploring different cultures is on my bucket list. Mine too. Let's plan a trip together. It could be an amazing experience. Agreed. And regarding our careers, networking is key. Maybe we can attend some industry events. That's a good point. Building a professional network can open doors to new opportunities. And don't forget about work-life balance. We should make time for hobbies and relaxation. Absolutely. I want a fulfilling career, but I also want to enjoy life outside of work. Speaking of enjoyment, I'm thinking of taking up a cooking class. It's a practical skill. Great idea. I could use some culinary skills too. Let's enroll in a class together. Perfect. And as we're planning for the future, setting short-term goals can keep us on track. True. Let's break down our big goals into smaller, achievable steps. And regular check-ins will help us stay accountable. How about monthly goal reviews? Sounds like a plan. It'll keep us focused and motivated by the way, have you considered further education to boost our career prospects? Yes, I'm thinking of taking some online courses. Continuous learning is essential. I agree. It shows dedication and keeps our skills up to date. And let's not forget about giving back to the community. Volunteering could be rewarding. Absolutely. It's a way to make a positive impact while building a sense of community. I'm glad we're on the same page about our future plans. Teamwork makes the dream work. Totally. With dedication and mutual support, we can achieve our goals and build a bright future. Lesson 7. The instrument that we want to play. Hey, have you ever thought about learning to play an instrument? Yeah, I've been considering it. What about you? I'm thinking of picking up the guitar. It seems like a versatile instrument. Oh, nice choice. 
I was actually leaning towards the piano. It sounds so classic. True, the piano has a timeless appeal. Why the piano, though? Well, it just feels like a good starting point for me. It's a bit challenging, but I like the idea of playing melodies with both hands. That does sound challenging, but rewarding. I'm curious. Any particular reason you're drawn to melodies? I guess I enjoy the emotional aspect of music. Melodies can convey so much, you know? Absolutely. And with the guitar, I like the idea of strumming chords to create a rhythm. It feels more connected to the beat. Interesting. Rhythm is crucial. I've always found it a bit tricky to keep a steady beat. How do you manage that with the guitar? Well, there are different strumming patterns you can practice. It's all about finding the right flow and syncing it with the song. That makes sense. I suppose practice is key for any instrument. Definitely. It's a journey. Speaking of which, have you considered taking lessons or learning on your own? I'm thinking of starting with some online lessons. I've heard there are great tutorials for beginners. Yeah, online resources are a game changer. I've been checking out some beginner guitar tutorials myself. Cool. Maybe we can compare notes sometime. Hey, have you thought about the type of guitar you want? I'm leaning towards an acoustic guitar for starters. Seems like a good choice for building a foundation. Nice. Acoustic guitars have a warm sound. I'm still deciding between an upright piano and an electric keyboard. Electric keyboards offer a variety of sounds. Plus, you can use headphones, which is handy for practice. True, the versatility is tempting. But there's something about the traditional feel of an upright piano that I like. I get that. The aesthetics do play a role. By the way, how often do you plan to practice? I'm aiming for at least 30 minutes a day to start. Not too much, but enough to make progress. That sounds reasonable. Consistency is key, they say. Definitely. And what about you? How do you plan to structure your practice sessions? I'm thinking of dividing it into segments. Some time for chords, some for strumming, and maybe learning a new song each week. Sounds organized. I might steal that idea for my piano practice. Do you have a favorite genre you want to play on the guitar? I'm into folk and indie music, so I guess that's where I'll start. How about you? I enjoy classical pieces, but I'll probably begin with some contemporary songs to keep things interesting. Good plan. Mixing it up keeps the motivation alive. Hey, have you ever attended a live concert? Yeah, a few. The energy and connection between the musicians and the audience are amazing. I totally agree. It's inspiring to see skilled musicians in action. Makes you want to get better. Absolutely. Maybe we can catch a concert together sometime. That sounds like a plan. We can get inspired and then go home to practice even more. True. Motivation boost. Oh, speaking of motivation, do you have any favorite artists who play the guitar? I'm a big fan of Ed Sheeran's acoustic style. His songwriting is impressive too. How about you? Classical pianists like Chopin and Beethoven inspire me. But for contemporary, I like Ludovico Einaudi's piano compositions. Nice choices. It's great to draw inspiration from different genres. Keeps things fresh. Agreed. Hey, have you ever tried playing any other instruments before deciding on the guitar? I dabbled with the harmonica once, but the guitar seems like a better fit for me. How about you? I experimented with the flute briefly, but the piano captured my interest more. So, are you excited to start this musical journey? Absolutely. It's going to be challenging, but I'm looking forward to the learning process. How about you? Same here. The thought of making beautiful music is exciting. We'll have to update each other on our progress. Definitely. It'll be motivating to see each other grow as musicians. What's the first song you want to learn? I think I'll start with something simple, maybe a classic like For Elise.
How about you? I'm eyeing Horse with No Name by America. The chords seem manageable for a beginner. Solid choices. We'll have to play them for each other once we get the hang of it. Absolutely. A mini concert between friends? It'll be fun. For sure. We can celebrate our musical milestones together. It's a deal then. Here's to the beginning of our musical journeys. Cheers. May the chords be ever in our favor. Lesson 8, Our Lovely Pet Hey, how's your pet doing? Oh, he's fine, thanks. Just got back from the vet. Really? What happened? Nothing serious, just a regular checkup. That's good. Is he eating well? Yes, he has a healthy appetite. How about your pet? She's doing great. I took her for a walk yesterday and she had so much fun. Nice. I need to take mine out more often. It's good exercise for them. By the way, have you tried that new pet food? Yeah, I switched to it recently. Seems like he enjoys it. Mine too. It's amazing how picky they can be. True. Do you brush your pet's fur regularly? Yes, almost every day. Keeps it shiny and reduces shedding. I should do that more often. How about toys? Any recommendations? Oh, the squeaky toys are a hit with my pet. Keeps her entertained for hours. I'll get some this weekend. And what about training? Basic commands are essential. My pet learned sit and stay pretty quickly. Mine struggles with stay. Any tips? Patience is key. Also, treats as rewards work wonders. Good idea. Speaking of treats, have you tried making homemade ones? Yeah, I found a simple recipe online. My pet loves them. Mind sharing the recipe? I want to try it too. Of course. I'll send it to you later. Have you thought about getting a second pet? Not yet. One is enough for now. How about you? Same here. One keeps me busy, but it's so rewarding. Agreed. Pets bring so much joy to our lives. Absolutely. By the way, do you have any pet insurance? No, not yet. Is it worth it? It saved me a lot when my pet had an accident. I'd recommend looking into it. Thanks for the advice. I'll check it out. And have you ever taken your pet to a groomer? Yeah, for a bath and trim. They did a fantastic job. I should schedule one soon. Does your pet get along with other animals? Mostly, but she's a bit shy. How about yours? He's friendly, but sometimes he gets too excited and overwhelms other pets. Socializing is crucial. Maybe a pet play date could help? That's a great idea. We should plan one. Definitely. And have you considered microchipping? Not yet. Is it necessary? It's a safety net. In case they ever get lost, it helps reunite them with their owner. I'll look into it. Thanks for the suggestion. How often do you take your pet to the park? At least twice a week. It's a nice change of scenery for both of us. I need to make that a routine. Does your pet have a favorite spot at home? She loves the sunny spot by the window. It's her go-to nap spot. Cute. Mine prefers curling up on the couch. Do you have any pet-friendly furniture? Yeah, I have a few items. It makes cleanup much easier. I should invest in some. And do you use a specific type of litter for your pet? I switch to a clumping one. Less mess and easier to clean. I'm using non-clumping, but I'll give the other one a try. Thanks for the tip. No problem. How about dental care? Do you brush your pet's teeth? I tried, but he's not a fan. Any tricks to make it more enjoyable for them? Start slow and use a pet-friendly toothpaste. They come in flavors they like. I'll give it another shot. 
And does your pet have any quirky habits? She loves chasing her tail. It's hilarious to watch. Mine does this thing where he hides his toys. Have you encountered that? Yeah, it's like a little treasure hunt. Pets are full of surprises. Definitely. They bring so much joy and laughter into our lives. Couldn't agree more. Well, I've got to run. Give your pet a pat for me. Will do. Take care and say hi to your furry friend for me. Lesson 9. Favorite team in soccer. Hey, have you seen the latest match of our favorite team? Yeah, it was amazing. They played so well. I know, right? I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. The goalkeeper made some incredible saves. Absolutely. And did you see that goal in the second half? Pure genius. Yeah, it was a game changer. Our team really needed that. I'm just glad they're back in good form. The last few games were a bit disappointing. True, but every team has its ups and downs. Do you think they have a chance in the upcoming tournament? Definitely. If they keep playing like this, they can go all the way. I hope so. It would be fantastic to see them lift the trophy. The coach seems to be doing a great job with the tactics. Yeah, and the new players have added a fresh dynamic to the team. I was a bit skeptical at first, but they've proven themselves. It's essential for the team to have a good mix of experienced and young players. Agreed. The veterans bring leadership and the younger ones bring energy. Did you catch the post-match interview with the captain? No, I missed it. What did they say? They mentioned how the team's camaraderie is at an all-time high. That's great to hear. A united team is a strong team. And the fans were incredible in the stadium. The atmosphere was electric. I wish I could have been there. Watching it on TV just isn't the same. I know what you mean, but hey, we can plan to catch a live game sometime. Absolutely. It's been a while since we went to a match together. We should make it happen. Maybe when they play against their arch rivals? That would be intense. The rivalry games are always so thrilling. And the banter between the fans adds an extra layer of excitement. Do you think our team can maintain this level of performance? I hope so. The key is consistency, you know? Yeah, avoiding injuries and keeping the momentum going is crucial. And they need to stay focused, especially during tough away games. True. Away games can be challenging, but that's where true champions shine. I was checking the league standings earlier. We're climbing up. That's awesome news. How close are we to the top spot? Just a few points behind. If we keep winning, we'll be there soon. Exciting times ahead then. I can't wait for the next match. Me neither. It's become a weekly highlight for me. Same here. I even rearrange my schedule to make sure I don't miss a game. Dedication, my friend. That's what being a true fan is all about. Absolutely. Win or lose, I'll always support our team. That's the spirit. It's the ups and downs that make being a fan worthwhile. Remember that nail-biter of a match last season? It went into extra time. Oh, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I couldn't believe it. And when they scored in the last minute of extra time, pure euphoria. I celebrated like we won the championship. It was such a relief. Those are the moments you remember as a fan, the highs and the lows. And the banter with friends who support rival teams adds a fun rivalry. Yeah, it's all in good spirits. At the end of the day, it's just a game. True, but it's a game that brings people together, and that's what I love about it. Couldn't agree more. The joy, the heartbreak, the shared experiences, it's special. Let's hope our team keeps giving us reasons to cheer and celebrate. 
Cheers to that. To our team and the beautiful game of soccer. Lesson 10. Problems in our city. Hey, have you noticed the traffic in our city lately? Yeah, it's getting worse day by day. I think there should be more public transportation options. True, the buses are always crowded. Maybe they should invest in a metro system. That's a good idea. It could help reduce the number of cars on the road. And speaking of roads, the potholes are a nightmare. They need to fix them ASAP. Absolutely. I've almost damaged my car a couple of times because of those potholes. I heard there's a plan to improve the infrastructure. Hope it happens soon. Yeah, let's hope they don't just talk about it but actually take action. The pollution is another concern. We need more green spaces and better waste management. I agree. Cleaner air and a healthier environment would make a huge difference. The cost of living is also going up. Rent, groceries, everything. Tell me about it. I wish there were more affordable housing options. And the job market isn't great either. It's tough finding a decent job. Maybe the city should attract more companies to create more opportunities. Yeah, that could boost the economy and create more jobs. On a different note, have you noticed the increase in crime lately? Yeah, it's concerning. We need better law enforcement and community policing. Agreed. It would make the city a safer place for everyone. Education is another issue. The schools need more resources. True. Investing in education is an investment in the future. Did you hear about the new cultural center they're planning to build? Yeah, it sounds exciting. It could bring more cultural events to the city. That might attract more tourists, too, boosting the local economy. Hopefully, it's well managed and the benefits reach the community. The healthcare system could also use some improvements. Yeah, shorter wait times and better access to healthcare services would be great. I wonder if there's a platform for citizens to voice their concerns. Maybe we should start a petition or something to get our voices heard. Good idea. We need a platform for constructive feedback and suggestions. It's crucial for the city to evolve and address the needs of its residents. I think the city council should be more transparent about their decisions. Transparency builds trust. It's essential for a thriving community. Do you think organizing community events would help bring people together? Definitely. It fosters a sense of community and strengthens social bonds. We should also encourage local businesses to thrive. It supports the economy. True. Supporting local businesses keeps the money circulating within the community. Have you ever considered joining a neighborhood watch program? It's not a bad idea. It could help make our streets safer. And we should promote environmental awareness. Maybe start a recycling program? Absolutely. Small steps like recycling can make a big difference over time. Talking about the city's image, I think we should highlight its positive aspects. A positive image could attract more investments and opportunities. What about public spaces? They could use some beautification. Planting more trees and flowers would not only look nice but also improve air quality. I wish there were more sports facilities for everyone to enjoy. True, it promotes a healthy lifestyle and a sense of community. How about organizing a neighborhood cleanup day? That's a fantastic idea. It promotes civic responsibility and a cleaner environment. We need to address these issues collectively. It's not just the government's responsibility. Exactly. A community working together can bring about positive change. I read about a successful community garden in another city. Maybe we could start one here. That could provide fresh produce and bring people together in a shared activity. 
What are your thoughts on improving public spaces for children? Playgrounds and safe spaces for kids are crucial. It enhances the quality of life for families. I've heard about initiatives where communities come together for street art projects. Street art can add vibrancy to the city and create a sense of pride among residents. Let's not forget about the importance of cultural diversity in our city. Embracing diversity enriches our community. It's something we should celebrate. I wonder if there are any grants or funding opportunities for community projects. It's worth looking into. Financial support could make a significant difference. I've been thinking about starting a community newsletter. What do you think? A newsletter could keep everyone informed and engaged. It's a great way to share ideas. Let's encourage more civic participation. Maybe host town hall meetings? Town hall meetings provide a platform for open discussions and community input. It's essential to strike a balance between progress and preserving our city's history. Preserving our cultural heritage is vital. It gives our city a unique identity. What if we create a mentorship program for young entrepreneurs? A mentorship program could nurture talent and contribute to economic growth. And we should advocate for better public services, like healthcare and education. Advocacy can make a difference. It's about ensuring our basic needs are met. Let's encourage responsible tourism. It can bring in revenue without harming the environment. Responsible tourism is key. It benefits the city while preserving its natural beauty. What if we organize a citywide cleanup day? It could involve everyone. A cleanup day is a practical way to instill a sense of pride and ownership in our city. We should also promote sustainable practices, like using renewable energy. Sustainable practices are crucial for the long-term well-being of our city. Let's stay informed about local policies and elections. Our voices matter. Being informed allows us to make informed decisions and contribute to positive change. It's inspiring to see how small changes can lead to a big impact in a community. Absolutely. Every action, no matter how small, contributes to the overall well-being of our city. I appreciate our conversation. It's motivating to brainstorm ideas for a better city. Likewise. Let's continue to share ideas and work towards making our city a better place for everyone. Lesson 11. Setting and Achieving Fitness Goals Hey, have you thought about getting in shape lately? Yeah, I've been considering it. I want to be healthier. Same here. I was thinking of starting with some light exercises, maybe jogging. That sounds good. I'm not really into intense workouts. Me neither. Just trying to stay active. What's your fitness goal? I just want to lose a bit of weight and feel more energized. You? I'm aiming for better overall fitness. Maybe tone up a bit, you know? Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. What kind of exercises are you thinking of? I heard bodyweight exercises are effective. Squats, push-ups, that sort of thing. Yeah, those sound doable. I was considering yoga for flexibility. Nice choice. Yoga's great for both flexibility and relaxation. We could try a class together. Sure, that sounds fun. Do you follow any specific diet? Not really, just trying to cut down on unhealthy snacks. How about you? I'm thinking of incorporating more veggies and less processed food. Smart move. Small changes can make a big difference. Have you set a workout schedule? Not yet. I was thinking maybe three times a week to start. What about you? Same here. Consistency is key. Maybe we could motivate each other. That's a great idea. It's always easier with a workout buddy. Are you into any sports? I used to play soccer. Thinking of joining a local league again. You? 
Not really into competitive sports, but maybe something recreational like badminton. Nice. Mixing it up keeps things interesting. How do you stay motivated? Well, I thought of setting short-term goals, like reaching a certain weight in a month. That's a good approach. I'm more about enjoying the process and celebrating small victories. True. We shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. What about cheat days? Do you have them? Oh, for sure. A little treat here and there keeps me sane. It's all about balance. I like that mindset. What's your favorite healthy snack? Probably fruit or a handful of nuts. Easy and satisfying. What about you? I'm a fan of Greek yogurt with some honey and berries. Sounds delicious. We should swap some recipes. How do you deal with sore muscles? I've heard stretching helps. Maybe a hot bath. You? Yeah, stretching is a lifesaver. I also use a foam roller. Works wonders. I'll look into that. Do you track your progress? Yeah, I keep a workout journal. It helps me see how far I've come. Interesting. I might try that. What about rest days? How often do you take them? At least one or two a week. Your body needs time to recover. Overtraining can be counterproductive. Good point. I'll keep that in mind. Do you have any favorite fitness apps? I use one for tracking my runs and another for quick home workouts. They're pretty handy. I'll check those out. Do you have any fitness role models? Not really. I'm more inspired by personal progress. What about you? I follow a few fitness influencers on social media. They share useful tips and motivation. That's cool. It's nice to have some inspiration. Have you noticed any changes in your energy levels? Yeah, I feel more awake during the day. It's surprising how exercise affects energy. Absolutely. It's like a natural energy booster. Have you convinced anyone else to join you on this fitness journey? Not yet, but I'm working on it. How about you? My sister's considering it. I think we might start jogging together. It's always more fun with company. Definitely. We should get our friends involved too. The more, the merrier. Agreed. It's all about creating a positive and supportive fitness community. Lesson 12. My Ideal Car Hey, have you ever thought about your dream car? Yeah, I'd love to own a sleek sports car someday. Nice choice. What model are you thinking of? I've always had a thing for the classic Mustang. The design is just so cool. True, the Mustang is a classic. I'm more into practical cars, like a sturdy SUV. SUVs are great for family trips. I prefer the speed and style of a sports car. I get that. A sports car does have a certain allure. Any specific color you're picturing? Red, for sure. It's vibrant and attention-grabbing. Classic choice. I'm leaning towards a metallic blue for my SUV. Looks sharp. Metallic blue is classy. But imagine cruising in a red Mustang. It's a head-turner. For sure. And the engine sound, especially on a Mustang, is music to the ears. Absolutely. The roar of a powerful engine adds a whole new dimension to the driving experience. Talking about driving, do you prefer manual or automatic transmission? I like the control of a manual transmission. How about you? I'm more comfortable with automatic. Less hassle in heavy traffic. Fair point. But there's something exhilarating about shifting gears, you know? I can imagine. It's all about personal preference. By the way, any specific brand you're eyeing? I've always admired the Ford Mustang. American muscle cars have a unique charm. Nice. I'm thinking of going for a reliable Japanese brand for my SUV, maybe a Toyota. Toyota is known for durability. But there's nothing like the boldness of an American muscle car. True. 
Practicality versus style, I guess. What about the interior? Any must-have features? Leather seats and a killer sound system. Gotta have those for the complete experience. I agree. Comfort is key. In my SUV, I'd prioritize spacious seating and a user-friendly dashboard. Different strokes for different folks. A comfy interior makes those long drives enjoyable. Absolutely. Dream cars are all about making every drive a memorable experience. Totally. Imagine taking a road trip in a convertible Mustang with the wind in your hair. Sounds amazing. But I'm more inclined towards an SUV's cargo space for road trips. Fair enough. Each to their own. How about fuel efficiency? Something you consider? Definitely. I'm thinking of a hybrid SUV for better mileage and eco-friendliness. That's responsible. The environment matters. Mustangs, though, are more about power. True, they are. But you've got to balance power and responsibility. Any specific road you dream of driving on? I've always imagined cruising down the Pacific Coast Highway in California. The views would be breathtaking. Nice choice. I'm more into off-road adventures, so an SUV suits my dream road trip. Off-roading has its own charm. A Mustang might struggle, but an SUV can handle it. Exactly. Different cars, different adventures. Hey, do you think you'll customize your dream car? Oh, for sure. I'd add racing stripes and maybe upgrade the exhaust for that extra roar. Sounds cool. Customization adds a personal touch. I might add roof racks for my SUV, practical and stylish. Roof racks are handy. You can carry so much more on road trips. What about maintenance costs? That's a concern. Japanese cars are known for low maintenance costs, which is a plus for me. American muscle cars might have higher maintenance costs, but the experience is worth it. It's all about finding the right balance. By the way, do you follow any car-related blogs or magazines? Yeah, I read a few. Keeps me updated on the latest models and trends. Same here. Staying informed is crucial when it comes to making the right choice. Definitely. The more you know, the better decision you can make. Hey, do you have a timeline for getting your dream car? I'm thinking within the next two years. Need to save up and plan it out. Good plan. I'm not in a rush, but hopefully, within the next three years, I'll be cruising in my dream Mustang. That sounds like a solid timeline. Patience is key when it comes to big purchases like a dream car. Absolutely. It's a significant investment, so it's worth taking the time to make the right choice. For sure. Well, whenever you get that Mustang, I hope you enjoy every moment on the road. Thanks. And when you get your dream SUV, may every road trip be an adventure. Cheers to that. Let's make our dream car journeys a reality. Lesson 13. Imagining my perfect dream home. Hey, have you ever thought about your dream home? Yeah, I have. I'd love a cozy house with a garden. That sounds nice. How many bedrooms would you want? Two would be enough, one for us and one for guests. I prefer a bigger house, maybe with three bedrooms. More space is always good, but I like a manageable size. What kind of location do you have in mind? I'd love to live in the suburbs, away from the city's noise. I'm more of a city person. I'd choose a place with easy access to amenities. How about the design, modern or traditional? I'm leaning towards a modern design, sleek and simple. I like the charm of a traditional home, something timeless. Would you want a pool in your dream home? No, a garden and a swing set for kids would be great. I'd love a pool though for those hot summer days. And what about the kitchen? Any special preferences? A spacious, open kitchen for sure. I enjoy cooking. I'd like a cozy kitchen, not too big, but functional. 
How about the view from your dream home? I'd like a view of greenery, like a park or trees. I'd prefer a nice city skyline view, something vibrant. Do you have any specific colors in mind for the interior? I'm into neutral colors, like white and gray. I prefer warm colors, like earthy tones and pastels. What about a fireplace? Would you want one? Yeah, a fireplace would be lovely, especially in winter. I've always wanted a fireplace too, so cozy and inviting. How important is a garage to you? A garage is a must for me to keep my car safe. I don't have a car, so not really necessary for me. Would you want a walk-in closet in your bedroom? It would be a dream come true. I have so many clothes. I'd be fine with a regular closet, not too picky about that. How about a backyard for barbecues and gatherings? That sounds great, but I prefer a low-maintenance garden. Yeah, I can see the appeal of that. Less work to do. What about a home office or study space? I'd love a home office, especially with the remote work trend. I'd use a spare bedroom as a study. I think it's practical. Do you have any ideas for the flooring in your dream home? Hardwood floors, they look classy and are easy to clean. I'd like some plush carpets. They make the place feel cozy. How important is natural light to you? I love it. Big windows for lots of natural light. Same here, big windows and lots of sunlight are a must. Would you consider a smart home with all the gadgets? Yeah, I'm into technology, so a smart home is appealing. I'm a bit old-fashioned, so not too keen on that. What's your opinion on energy-saving features? I think they're important, both for the environment and savings. Agreed. Energy-efficient appliances can make a difference. How do you feel about having a backyard garden? I'd love a garden with some fruit trees and a nice lawn. That sounds wonderful. Being close to nature is great. And what's your take on having a guest room? I definitely want a guest room for when friends or family visit. I think it's practical too, so a guest room is a must. Would you consider building your dream home or buying one? I'd prefer to buy. Saves time and effort. Building could be nice. You get it exactly the way you want. How do you imagine the entrance to your dream home? A welcoming front porch with some plants and a bench. I'd like a modern entrance, clean and uncluttered. Do you have any pets or plans for them? I have a dog, so a pet-friendly home is a must. No pets for me, but it's important to accommodate them. What about the neighborhood? What's important to you? Safety and good schools are top priorities for me. I'd prefer a lively neighborhood with restaurants and shops. How do you feel about having a basement? A basement could be useful for storage or as a playroom. I'd prefer not to have one. They can be a bit creepy. Any specific type of roof you'd like for your dream home? A sloping roof with some attic space for extra storage. Flat roofs look modern, and they can be great for solar panels. Would you want to live in a gated community? I'd feel safer in a gated community. It's a nice idea. I think it could be a bit too restrictive for my taste. What's your take on home security systems? They're a good idea for peace of mind, especially in a city. I agree. A security system is a must these days. Do you have any plans for outdoor space like a patio? A patio for outdoor dining and relaxation would be great. I'd like a small one, just enough for a coffee table and chairs. How important is having a bathtub in your bathroom? 
I love long baths, so a bathtub is a must for me. I'm more of a quick shower person, so it's not essential. And how about the heating system? Central heating is practical for all seasons. I like the idea of a fireplace and maybe some radiators. What's your opinion on having a backyard pool? I'd prefer a garden, but a small pool could be nice. I've always wanted a pool for swimming and cooling off. How important is public transport access for you? I rely on public transport, so it's a crucial factor. I use my car mostly, so it's not a deal breaker for me. Would you consider living in a historic district? I love the charm of old houses, so I'd consider it. I prefer modern districts, but I can appreciate the history. How about having a balcony in your dream home? A balcony with a view would be fantastic. Lesson 14. My achievements from last year. Hey, do you remember last year? We achieved so much. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. We really put in a lot of effort. Absolutely. I think our teamwork was key to our success. Definitely. We all played our part and made a real impact. I'm proud of what we accomplished. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. True. Overcoming challenges made the achievement even more satisfying. I feel like we improved our skills throughout the project. Yeah, and I learned a lot from the experience. Our project management skills really came into play. Totally. Planning and organizing were crucial. Remember when we had that tight deadline? We somehow made it work. Oh, that was stressful, but we pulled through. It showed our resilience. And the positive feedback we got afterward was really motivating. Absolutely. It's great when hard work gets recognized. I think we exceeded expectations. Yeah, we went above and beyond what was required. Our communication skills also improved during the project. Yes, especially when it came to expressing ideas and resolving conflicts. It's amazing how much we accomplished in just a year. Time flies when you're focused and working hard. I'm grateful for the support we received from the team. Team spirit was crucial. Everyone contributed to our success. Looking back, I see how much we've grown professionally. Definitely. We faced challenges that pushed us to develop new skills. The project also helped us build a stronger professional network. Networking is so important. It opens up new opportunities. I remember celebrating our success at the end of the project. That was a great moment. We deserve to pat ourselves on the back. I think the experience will benefit us in future projects. Absolutely. We can apply what we learn to overcome future challenges. And it's good for our resumes, too. Yeah, it's a significant achievement that stands out. I appreciate the collaboration and the positive atmosphere we had. Team dynamics really make a difference in the workplace. It's nice to look back and reflect on our journey. It gives us perspective on what we're capable of achieving. I remember when we first started the project, we had some doubts. Yeah, but we turned those doubts into determination. The sense of accomplishment is something I'll always cherish. Same here. It was a defining moment in our careers. I think we set a high standard for ourselves. And it's a standard we should strive to maintain. I'm grateful for the experience and the lessons learned. Every challenge was an opportunity to learn and grow. We also managed to stay within budget, which was impressive. Budget management is a valuable skill. It shows our responsibility. Our supervisor was pleased with the outcome. Yeah, their positive feedback was the cherry on top. 
I think the project made us more adaptable. We had to adjust our plans at times, and it taught us to be flexible. I feel like we built a strong foundation for future projects. Definitely. We have a solid base to tackle whatever comes next. Remember that training workshop we attended? It really helped. Yeah, it provided us with the tools we needed for success. The project strengthened our problem-solving skills. We encountered various challenges, and finding solutions was rewarding. The recognition from our colleagues was also satisfying. It's nice when your peers acknowledge your hard work. I think the experience made us more confident in our abilities. Confidence is key. It helps us take on new challenges without hesitation. I appreciate the time and effort everyone invested in the project. Team commitment was crucial. We all contributed to the end result. It's amazing how much we accomplished with effective time management. Time was our ally. We used it wisely to meet deadlines. I believe the project showcased our leadership potential. Leadership emerged naturally within the team. We all took initiative. The collaboration between departments was seamless. Cross-departmental collaboration enhanced the project's success. I'm glad we documented our progress throughout the project. Documentation was key for keeping everyone on the same page. The experience taught us to embrace change and adapt quickly. Change is inevitable, and being adaptable is a valuable skill. Our achievements are a testament to our dedication. Dedication and hard work truly pay off in the end. I think the project brought out the best in each of us. It challenged us to reach new heights, and we rose to the occasion. Reflecting on our achievements motivates me for future endeavors. The past success is a solid foundation for our future endeavors. I'm grateful to have had such a supportive team. Team support made the journey enjoyable and successful. Overall, I'd say last year was a turning point in our careers. It certainly was. It opened doors and expanded our horizons. Lesson 15. A guide to prepare for scholarships. Hey, have you started getting ready for that scholarship application? Yeah, I've just begun. It's a bit overwhelming, though. I get that. What kind of scholarship are you going for? It's a merit-based one. I need to highlight my achievements and extracurriculars. Right. The whole shebang. Have you drafted your personal statement? Not yet. I'm brainstorming ideas, though. Any tips? Well, start with your motivations and experiences. Showcase your uniqueness. Got it. How about recommendation letters? Who should I ask? Teachers or supervisors who know you well. They should emphasize your strengths. Good call. I'll approach my math teacher and my internship supervisor. Smart choices. What about the language proficiency test? I'm a bit worried about that. English isn't my first language. No worries. Brush up on grammar and vocabulary. Maybe do some practice tests. That sounds doable. Did you check the eligibility criteria? Yeah, make sure you meet all the requirements. Don't miss any details. Thanks for the reminder. What about financial documentation? They might need proof of your financial situation. Gather all the necessary papers. True, I'll get started on that soon. How many words should the personal statement be? Usually around 500 to 800 words. Be concise, but highlight your achievements. Noted. Any advice on how to stand out in a sea of applicants? Focus on your unique experiences and how they shaped you. Be genuine. Genuineness. Got it. How are you managing the stress? Deep breaths and a study schedule. Break it into smaller tasks to make it less overwhelming. 
I'll try that. Are you applying for other scholarships too? Yeah, a couple. It's a numbers game, you know. Increase your chances. True, I should look into more options. Did you create a checklist? Absolutely. Keeps me on track. Tick off tasks as you complete them. A checklist sounds like a good idea. How do you plan on showcasing leadership skills? Highlight instances where you took initiative or led a team, even in small things. I'll think about that. Do you think the interview is challenging? Practice common questions. Be confident and articulate. You'll do great. I hope so. How's your progress so far? Getting there. It's a process, but each step takes you closer to the goal. Positive thinking. I like that. How important is community service in these applications? It can make you stand out. Emphasize the impact you've had on your community. I'll highlight my volunteer work then. Thanks for the tip. How do you plan to format your resume? Keep it clean and concise. Focus on relevant experiences and skills. Clear and concise, got it. Is there a specific format for the recommendation letters? Not really, but they should be formal and highlight your strengths convincingly. I'll brief my recommenders accordingly. Is there a deadline for submitting everything? Yeah, check the scholarship website. Don't miss the deadline. It's crucial. I'll make sure to note that down. How do you balance studying for exams and scholarship preparation? Allocate specific times for each. Don't let one overshadow the other. Time management, right? I struggle with that sometimes. How many scholarships are you applying for in total? About three. Quality over quantity, but having options is good. Three sounds manageable. I'll explore a few more. Are you using any online resources for guidance? Yeah, there are great templates and guides online. They're super helpful. I'll check those out. What's your backup plan if you don't get the scholarship? Apply for other financial aid options and maybe consider part-time work. True. Always good to have a plan B. How do you address weaknesses in your application? Acknowledge them briefly, but focus more on how you've learned and grown. Learn from mistakes, got it. Do you think grades weigh heavily in the selection process? They matter, but so do other factors. Showcase your overall capabilities. I'll make sure to highlight my strengths. How do you express gratitude in the application? A simple thank you at the end of your personal statement is a nice touch. I'll include that. Thanks for all the advice. I feel more confident now. Anytime. We're in this together. Good luck with your application. Lesson 16. A Daily Commute Hi. How do you get to work every day? I usually take the bus. What about you? I drive my car. It's convenient. Is traffic bad in the morning? Yeah, it can be a bit slow sometimes. I hate being stuck in traffic. Me too. Do you have a long commute? Not really. It takes about 30 minutes. Lucky you. Mine's closer to an hour. That's tough. Do you ever carpool? Sometimes with a colleague who lives nearby. Carpooling can save money and reduce traffic. Absolutely, and it's more eco-friendly. Do you take the subway on occasion? Yes, when I want to avoid the hassle of parking. I've heard the subway is crowded during rush hour. It can get packed, but it's fast. What time do you leave for work? I aim for 8.30 to avoid the worst of the rush. I leave around 7 o'clock to beat the traffic. Early bird, huh? I'm not a morning person. Mornings are tough, but it's worth it. 
Do you listen to music on your commute? Yes, it makes the ride more enjoyable. I listen to podcasts. They're entertaining. Any podcast recommendations? I like ones about true crime and history. Sounds interesting. I'll check them out. What do you do when you're stuck in traffic? I use that time to catch up on phone calls. Multitasking, I see. I usually daydream. Daydreaming can be nice too. Have you ever considered biking to work? It's too far for me, and I'm not a cyclist. It's a good way to stay in shape, though. I prefer the gym for that. Fair enough. What's your favorite part of the commute? I enjoy watching the city wake up. That's poetic. I like the fresh morning air. It's rejuvenating, isn't it? Do you take any shortcuts to avoid traffic? Yes, there's a back road I sometimes use. Clever. I should find some shortcuts. It helps save time and reduces stress. Do you ever car share with coworkers? Occasionally, when our schedules align. Sharing rides can be cost effective. Plus, it's nice to have company. I agree. Commuting can be a bit lonely. Well, we've made it more enjoyable with this chat. Lesson 17. Exploring my favorite sport. Hey, do you like sports? Yeah, I love sports. What about you? Same here. What's your favorite sport? I'm a big fan of soccer. How about you? Oh, nice. I prefer basketball. Do you play soccer yourself? Yeah, I play with some friends every weekend. It's a lot of fun. That sounds great. I play basketball at the local court. Ever tried it? Not really, but I'd love to give it a shot. What do you like about basketball? I enjoy the fast pace and teamwork. It's so thrilling. Soccer is exciting too, especially when there's a close match. Do you watch basketball games? Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I never miss my favorite team's matches. How about you and soccer? Absolutely. I follow the leagues and support my favorite team. Do you have a favorite player? Yeah, I admire LeBron James. His skills are amazing. Who's your soccer idol? Cristiano Ronaldo. That guy's a legend on the field. Do you play any other sports? Occasionally, I play tennis with my sister. It's a good workout. Do you have a favorite tennis player? Not really, but I watch Wimbledon every year. Tennis seems challenging. How did you get into basketball? My dad used to play, so he taught me when I was a kid. What about you and soccer? It's a family thing, too. We always watch matches together. Do you have a favorite basketball team? Yeah, I'm a die-hard fan of the Lakers. How about you and soccer? Barcelona all the way. Their style of play is incredible. Ever been to a live basketball game? No, but it's on my bucket list. Have you watched a soccer match in the stadium? Yeah, it's an unforgettable experience. The atmosphere is electric. Do you have a favorite basketball moment? The first time I made a three-pointer was pretty memorable. How about you and soccer? When my favorite team won the championship, that was pure joy. Do you play basketball for a team? Just casually with friends. I'm not that competitive. How about you and soccer? I play for a local team. It's a great way to stay active. Do you have any favorite basketball drills? I like practicing layups. They're crucial in a game. What about soccer drills? Dribbling drills help improve ball control. Do you have a favorite basketball coach? Phil Jackson is a legend. His coaching style is fascinating. How about soccer coaches? Pep Guardiola. His tactical approach is brilliant. Do you have a favorite sports quote? 
Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing. By Pelé. What's your favorite? The only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Do you follow any basketball blogs? Yeah, I read some NBA blogs for updates. Do you keep up with soccer news online? Absolutely. I follow the latest soccer news and transfer rumors. Do you have a favorite sports documentary? The Last Dance about Michael Jordan is incredible. How about you and soccer documentaries? Diego Maradona is a must-watch. His story is fascinating. Have you ever played fantasy basketball? Yeah, it adds a fun element to the season. Do they have fantasy soccer leagues? Definitely. It's a big thing. We should try it sometime. What's your favorite basketball snack? Popcorn during games is a classic. How about you and soccer? I love nachos with cheese. Perfect match day snack. Do you play any sports video games? NBA 2K is my go-to. What about you and soccer games? FIFA all the way. It's so realistic. Let's play together sometime. Lesson 18. Dealing with flight delays. Excuse me. Can you tell me why my flight is delayed? I'm sorry for the inconvenience. There's a technical issue with the plane. When will the plane be fixed? We're working on it, but it might take a few hours. Can I get compensation for this delay? You may be eligible for some compensation. Please fill out a form. What about my connecting flight? Will I miss it? We'll do our best to get you to your next flight on time. Can you arrange a hotel for me if I have to stay overnight? Yes, we'll provide accommodation and meals if needed. What's the next available flight to my destination? The next one is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Can I get a seat on that flight? I'll check for availability. Please wait a moment. Thanks for your help. Is there a place to charge my phone? Sure, there are charging stations over there. What if my luggage is already on the plane? Your luggage will be offloaded. No worries about that. Is there a free Wi-Fi connection here? Yes, you can connect to the airport's free Wi-Fi. What's the Wi-Fi password? It's Airport Wi-Fi 2023. Great, thanks. Can I get a voucher for a meal? Of course. Here's a voucher for the airport restaurant. How long should I stay in the departure area? Stay here until we announce your flight status. What's the reason for the technical issue? It's a minor mechanical problem that our engineers are fixing. Do you know if my travel insurance covers this delay? You should check your insurance policy for that information. I hope the weather won't cause further delays. We're keeping an eye on the weather, and safety is our priority. Can you provide updates on the flight status? We'll make announcements and display updates on the screens. How can I contact my family to let them know? There are payphones and a help desk for that purpose. I have a medical condition. Can I get special assistance? Please let us know and we'll arrange the necessary help. What's the compensation amount for this delay? It depends on the duration and reason for the delay. I hope my checked luggage doesn't get lost. Don't worry, it will be handled with care. Can I reschedule my return flight due to this delay? Yes, we can help you reschedule your return flight. What if I miss an important appointment because of this? We apologize for any inconvenience and can provide a letter for your appointment. How about a complimentary drink or snack? Sure, you can get one at the airport cafe. Will there be any extra charges for the rescheduled flight? If there's a price difference, you may need to pay it. Can I board the plane as soon as it's ready? 
We'll call you when it's time to board. Is there a place to store my hand luggage while I wait? You can use the overhead bins or store them under your seat. I hope this delay won't happen on my return flight. We'll do our best to prevent any future delays. Can I get a refund instead of taking the rescheduled flight? You'll need to contact our customer service for that. How do I find my gate when it's time to board? We'll announce the gate number when the plane is ready. Thanks for your assistance. I appreciate it. You're welcome. We aim to make your travel as smooth as possible. I'll just read a book while I wait. That sounds like a good idea to pass the time. How often will you provide updates on the flight? We'll announce updates every 30 minutes. Is there a restroom nearby? Yes, the restrooms are just around the corner. I hope the delay doesn't affect my hotel reservation. It's always a good idea to inform your hotel about the delay. Can you recommend a good book to read? I'm not sure, but you can ask the bookstore over there. I'm just glad the delay wasn't due to a security issue. Absolutely. Safety is our top priority. Is there a lost and found department in case I misplace something? Yes, it's located near the baggage claim area. I'll go there if I need assistance. Thanks again. You're welcome. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Lesson 19 Weekend Trip Chat Hey, did you have a nice weekend trip? Yes, it was great. We went to the mountains. Mountains? That sounds exciting. Yeah, it was beautiful. We hiked a lot. Hiking can be tiring, right? Yeah, but the views were amazing. Did you take many photos? Oh, lots of them. The scenery was breathtaking. I'd love to see them sometime. Sure, I'll show you later. Did you stay in a hotel? No, we camped in tents. It was fun. Camping is not really my thing. It's not for everyone, but I enjoy it. How was the weather? It was sunny most of the time, perfect for hiking. Did you have any problems? Well, we got lost once, but we found our way. That sounds a bit scary. It was, but it added some adventure. What about food? Did you eat out? We mostly cooked by the campfire. That must have been an experience. Yes, and the marshmallows were a hit. Did you meet any interesting people? Not really. We mostly kept to ourselves. Did you see any wildlife? We saw some birds and a squirrel. Sounds like a peaceful trip. It was away from the city's hustle. How long did you stay? Just the weekend, but it felt longer. I wish I could have joined you. You should come with us next time. I'd love to, but I'm not very outdoorsy. You can always give it a try. Maybe one day, who knows? That would be fun. We'll be waiting. Thanks. I'll think about it. Sure, no pressure. It's all about having a good time. I can see that. You look so relaxed. Nature has that effect on me. I can tell. Your trip was a success. Absolutely. Can't wait for the next one. Well, I hope you have many more great trips. Thank you. Have a good week ahead. Lesson 20, Tips for English Learners Hey, I've been feeling down lately. I feel like I'm not making much progress in learning English. I understand how you feel, but don't be too hard on yourself. Learning a new language can be challenging. Yeah, but I've been at it for a while and I still struggle with basic conversations. 
It's important to be patient and persistent. Have you tried practicing every day? Well, not really. Sometimes I skip days when I'm too busy. Consistency is key. Try to set aside a little time each day for language practice, even if it's just 15 minutes. I've also been struggling with pronunciation. I feel like my accent is terrible. Don't worry too much about that. It takes time to improve your pronunciation. You can use language apps or watch English videos to help with that. That's a good idea. But what about grammar? I always get confused with tenses. Grammar can be tricky, but there are many resources online that explain English grammar in a simple way. You can find them easily. True, I should look for some online grammar lessons. Do you think joining a language course would help? It can be beneficial, especially if you want structured learning. But it's not necessary. Self-study is also very effective. I'll try self-study more often then. It's just hard to stay motivated. I get it. Setting goals can help. For example, aim to have a 10-minute conversation in English every week. That sounds doable. I also worry about not understanding native speakers when they talk fast. Listening to English music, podcasts, and watching movies with subtitles can help improve your listening skills. Thanks for the tips. It's nice to know I'm not alone in feeling this way. You're definitely not alone. Learning a new language is a journey, and it's okay to have ups and downs. Just keep going, and you'll improve over time. You're right. I won't give up. Thanks for the encouragement. You're welcome. I'm here to support you in your English learning journey. Lesson 21, Winter Trip Plans. Hey, have you thought about our winter trip yet? Yeah, I have. I'm pretty excited. Where do you want to go? I was thinking of a cozy cabin in the mountains. What do you think? That sounds great. Do you prefer skiing or snowboarding? I'm more into skiing. How about you? I've tried skiing once, but I think I'd prefer snowboarding. It looks fun. We can try both. Have you checked the weather forecast for that time? Not yet. Should we do that first? Yes, it's important to ensure good conditions. I'll check it later. What about the accommodation? Any preferences? I like cabins with a fireplace. It feels so cozy and warm. That does sound cozy. And what about food? Are we cooking or eating out? I think we should cook some meals. Maybe try local dishes, too. Great idea. Have you looked for any good recipes? Not yet, but I will. Any particular activities you'd like to do? I'd love to go sledding and take a winter hike. How about you? Snowshoeing and building a snowman would be fun. Awesome. And what about clothing? Do we need to buy winter gear? Yeah, I need some warm clothes and snow boots. How about you? I have a few things, but I'll need to grab a few more items. We should shop together. Maybe we'll find some good deals. Sure, let's plan a shopping trip soon. Do we need to rent any equipment? We'll need skis, poles, and maybe a snowboard for you. All right, we should look for rentals nearby. How about transportation? I was thinking of renting a car for the trip. Does that work for you? Sounds good. It'll give us the flexibility to explore the area. What's our budget for this trip? We should set a limit. I agree. Let's decide on a budget to make it affordable. Have you checked the travel insurance? It's important for emergencies. Good point. I'll look into it to make sure we're covered. We should also make a packing list to ensure we don't forget anything. Definitely. Let's start making one soon. Have you thought about when we should leave and how many days to stay? I was thinking of a long weekend leaving on Friday. That works for me. Let's book the accommodation as soon as possible. Agreed. We should reserve it before it gets too busy. Should we invite others to join us or keep it just the two of us? 
I think just the two of us would be more relaxing, don't you? Yeah, you're right. It'll be a nice getaway for us. I can't wait. This winter trip is going to be fantastic. I feel the same way. It'll be an unforgettable experience. We'll make the most of it for sure. Let's start planning everything and make this trip a reality. I'm all in. Winter adventure, here we come. Lesson 22, exploring our favorite tech gadgets. Hey there, do you like gadgets? Oh, absolutely. I'm a big fan of tech stuff. What's your favorite gadget? Well, I'm really into smartphones. I just got the latest one and it's amazing. Nice. I've had mine for a while, but it still works great. What's so special about your new phone? It has a fantastic camera. I can take awesome photos and videos with it. That's cool. I love taking photos too. What brand is it? It's a Samsung. I find their phones user-friendly. I'm more of an Apple fan. I like the iOS system. That's fair. Apple products are known for their sleek design. True. Speaking of design, I recently got a smartwatch. It's so handy. Oh, I've heard about those. What can it do? It tracks my steps, heart rate, and I can even receive calls and messages on it. Sounds convenient. I have a fitness tracker, but it's not as versatile. Yeah, smartwatches are like mini computers on your wrist. I see. I'm more into e-readers. I love reading digital books. E-readers are great for that. I prefer physical books, though. It's a matter of preference, I guess. What's your favorite gadget? Well, I can't live without my laptop. It's essential for work and entertainment. I have a laptop, too. What do you use it for mostly? Work, streaming movies, and sometimes online gaming. Gaming? That's interesting. I play video games on my console. Yeah, I've considered getting a gaming console, but my laptop handles games pretty well. Cool. Do you use any accessories with your laptop? I have a wireless mouse and a comfortable keyboard. Those make a big difference in productivity, don't they? Absolutely. What about you? Any cool accessories for your gadgets? I have a wireless charger for my phone. It's so convenient. I should get one of those. Charging cables can be a hassle. They really are. What's your favorite app on your laptop? I'm hooked on social media and use it for work, so probably that. I use social media too. It's a great way to stay connected. Indeed. Any favorite apps on your smartphone? I love photo editing apps. They make my pictures pop. Photo editing is fun. I enjoy using weather apps and navigation apps. Very practical choices. I also use a language learning app. Oh, that's great. I've been meaning to learn a new language. It's never too late to start. Which language are you interested in? I've always wanted to learn Spanish. It's a beautiful language. Spanish is a fantastic choice. The app makes it easy to practice. I'll have to check it out. By the way, do you own any smart home gadgets? I have a smart speaker that controls my lights and plays music. Nice. I've been thinking about getting a smart thermostat. Smart thermostats are energy efficient and can save you money. That's exactly why I'm considering it. Do you have any concerns about technology? Cybersecurity worries me. I always try to be cautious online. That's a valid concern. I make sure to use strong passwords. Good practice. I also try to update my software regularly. Updates are essential for security. It's great that you're aware of that. Well, staying informed is crucial, right? Absolutely. It's been great chatting about our favorite gadgets and tech. Agreed. Technology has made our lives so much easier, hasn't it? Definitely. Let's stay connected and share more tech discoveries. Sounds like a plan.
Have a great day. You too. Lesson 23, my simple Thanksgiving plans. Hey, have you thought about Thanksgiving yet? Yeah, I'm planning to have a small gathering at my place. How about you? I'm not sure yet. I might visit my family or just stay home. What's on your menu? Well, I'll cook a turkey, some mashed potatoes, and some veggies. You know, the classics. Sounds good. Are you going to make pumpkin pie too? Oh, absolutely. I love pumpkin pie. How about you? I'm not much of a baker, but I'll bring a store-bought one. No worries. Store-bought pies can be delicious too. Will you watch the Thanksgiving parade on TV? Yeah, I like watching the parade while preparing the meal. Do you enjoy it? Definitely. It's a tradition for me. What time do you plan to start your meal? Probably around 2 p.m. How about you? That works for me. I'll aim for 3 p.m. Gives me some extra prep time. Nice. I'll help you out with anything you need when I'm done with my preparations. Thanks. It's always more fun to cook and celebrate together. Do you have any dietary restrictions to keep in mind? No, I'm pretty flexible. What about you? Well, my cousin is vegetarian, so I'll prepare a veggie alternative for her. That's thoughtful. It's good to cater to everyone's preferences. Are you going to decorate your place? Yeah, a little bit. I'll set the table with some fall-themed decorations. How about you? I'll do some simple decorations too, like a centerpiece and some candles. Sounds cozy. Are you planning any games or activities after the meal? I haven't thought about it yet. Do you have any ideas? Well, I thought we could play board games or watch a Thanksgiving movie. Board games sound fun. I'll bring some along. Great. It'll keep the festive spirit going. Do you plan to go Black Friday shopping? I might do some online shopping, but I'm not big on the crowds. How about you? Same here. I'll check out the online deals. Do you have any guests coming over? Just a couple of friends. How about you? My parents and a few close relatives. Do you usually take a walk after eating? Yes, a post-meal walk is a great idea. It helps with digestion. I agree. It's a nice tradition to have. Have you prepared your shopping list yet? Not yet, but I'll do it soon to avoid any last-minute rush. How about you? I have a list and will start shopping for the ingredients this weekend. That's smart planning. Are you making any homemade cranberry sauce? Of course. Homemade is the way to go. How about you? I'll go with the canned one. Homemade is beyond my culinary skills. No worries. Both are tasty in their own way. Do you plan to share recipes with friends? That's a good idea. We can exchange some recipes for next year. I'll bring my sweet potato casserole recipe. It's always a hit. I'd love to try it. I'll share my stuffing recipe in return. Awesome. It's going to be a Thanksgiving recipe swap. Have you invited anyone for dessert only? Not this time, but that's a great suggestion for the future. It's a good way to include more friends in the celebration. Do you make your gravy from scratch? No, I use the store-bought one. Do you make yours from scratch? Yeah, it's pretty easy. I can share the recipe if you're interested. Thanks. I might give it a try next time. Do you watch football games on Thanksgiving? Not really, but I might have the game on in the background. How about you? I'm not a big sports fan, so I'll probably skip it. Are you planning to donate to a food drive? Yes. I always make a donation to a local food bank. That's wonderful. I should do that too. It's a way to give back. Absolutely. It's important to remember those in need, especially during the holiday season.
What's your favorite part of Thanksgiving? I love the feeling of togetherness and gratitude. It's heartwarming. I couldn't agree more. It's a time to appreciate the people in our lives. Well, it sounds like we're both on the same page about Thanksgiving. Indeed, it's a special day to cherish. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. It's going to be a great Thanksgiving. Lesson 24. My plans for the weekend. Hey, what are you up to this weekend? Oh, I'm not sure yet. Maybe catch up on some rest. How about you? I was thinking of going for a hike on Saturday. Want to join? Hiking sounds nice, but I have some errands to run in the morning. No worries. Maybe we can have a picnic in the park in the afternoon instead. That sounds lovely. I'm in for a picnic. Great. Should we invite others too? Yeah, let's invite Sarah and David. They love picnics. Cool. I'll give them a call. What about Sunday? On Sunday, I want to visit the new art exhibition downtown. That sounds like a cultural plan. I might join you if I'm not too tired on Saturday. Sure. Take your time. How about you? Any other plans for Sunday? I'll probably relax at home, maybe catch up on some reading. Nice. A bit of relaxation is always good. Do you have any movie recommendations for the weekend? Well, there's a new comedy film I heard about. We can watch it on Saturday night. Sounds like a plan. I'll get some popcorn. And I'll bring the drinks. Perfect. By the way, have you tried the new restaurant in town? Not yet. How about we try it for dinner on Sunday? Sure, that sounds exciting. I've heard they have delicious food. I'm looking forward to it. What time should we meet? Let's aim for 7 p.m. That gives us time to relax before dinner. Agreed. It's a date then. Definitely. This weekend is shaping up to be great. I couldn't agree more. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. I'm glad we're making plans. It's been a while since we hung out. Yeah, life gets busy, but it's important to make time for friends. Absolutely. Friends make the weekends better. So, what book are you planning to read this weekend? I just picked up a mystery novel. It's supposed to be a real page-turner. Sounds intriguing. I might borrow it after you're done. Of course. You're welcome to borrow it. What about you? Any book on your list? I've been wanting to start a new self-help book. I need some motivation. That's a good choice. Self-improvement is always a worthy pursuit. I hope so. It's about time I work on some personal goals. You can do it. And remember, I'm here to support you. Thanks, that means a lot. Having supportive friends is the best. We've got each other's backs. It's what friends do. Indeed. I'm lucky to have you as a friend. The feeling is mutual. Now, back to the weekend plans. Any specific park for our picnic? How about Greenfield Park? It's peaceful, and there's a nice lake. Greenfield Park it is. I'll bring a cozy blanket. I'll pack some sandwiches and snacks. Don't forget a frisbee. We can play some games, too. Good idea. It'll be a fun day outdoors. I'm looking forward to it. It's been too long since we enjoyed nature. Nature always refreshes the soul. It's just what we need. You're absolutely right. I can't wait for this weekend. Me neither. It's going to be a memorable one. Well, I'll let Sarah and David know about our plans. Thanks for organizing. I appreciate it. No problem. It's a team effort. That's why our weekends are always a blast. True, and I can't wait to make more great memories this weekend. Cheers to that! Let's make it awesome!
Cheers. It's a date then. I'll see you this weekend. Can't wait. See you soon. Lesson 25, My Favorite Music Bands. Hey, have you heard about that cool band? Yeah, I love them. What's your favorite song of theirs? Well, I really like Timeless Melody. It's so catchy. Oh, that's a great choice. I prefer Echoes of Dreams. The lyrics are amazing. Totally. The lead singer has such a unique voice. Yeah, they're so talented. I heard they're going on tour soon. Seriously? That's awesome. We should totally get tickets. Absolutely. I've never been to one of their concerts before. You'll love it. The atmosphere is electric. Do they play a lot of their older stuff? Yeah, they mix it up. Hits from the past and some new tracks. Nice. I can't wait to experience it. By the way, have you seen their latest music video? Oh yeah, the one with the stunning visuals? It's incredible. I couldn't agree more. Their videos are always so creative. And the way they experiment with different genres is fascinating. True. It keeps their music fresh and interesting. I heard the guitarist is working on a solo project too. Really? That's intriguing. I wonder what it will sound like. I'm curious too. The band's dynamic won't be the same without them. Yeah, each member adds something special to the mix. Have you ever tried playing any of their songs on an instrument? I've attempted the guitar part for rhythmic harmony. It's a bit challenging, but fun. Nice effort. I'm still learning to play the drums to their beat. That's cool. Maybe we can jam together sometime. Absolutely. It would be a blast. By the way, do you follow them on social media? Yeah, their posts give a behind-the-scenes look at their lives. It's cool to see the personal side of the band members. Definitely. They seem down-to-earth and passionate about their music. Did you catch their interview on the radio last week? No, I missed it. What did they talk about? They discussed the inspiration behind their latest album. It was so interesting. I'll have to find a recording of it. Their creative process fascinates me. It's worth listening to. It gives you a deeper appreciation for their music. I agree. Their lyrics often have profound meanings. And the way they connect with their audience is special. I remember when they performed live on TV. The energy was unbelievable. Yeah, that kind of performance leaves a lasting impression. I hope they continue making music for years to come. Me too. They're a timeless band. Couldn't have said it better. Lesson 26, Exploring My Favorite Comedy Shows. Hey, have you seen that new comedy show on TV? Oh, you mean the one with the funny characters? Yes, that's the one. I think it's hilarious. Me too. The jokes are so simple but so funny. And the actors are really talented. Definitely, they make me laugh every time. Do you have a favorite character from the show? I like the main character. He's always getting into funny situations. Yeah, he's a real goofball, isn't he? That's what makes the show so entertaining. And the supporting cast is great, too. Yeah, they add a lot of humor to the show. Have you seen the latest episode? Not yet. I missed it last night. You should watch it. It's full of laughs. I'll definitely catch up on it this weekend. What do you think about the show's writing? I think it's clever. The writers come up with some funny scenarios. They have a knack for creating hilarious situations. And the dialogue is so witty. I agree. It's full of one-liners that crack me up. The show's humor is quite lighthearted. 
That's why I love it. It's a perfect stress reliever. Same here. It's a great way to unwind after a long day. Do you ever quote lines from the show in your daily life? Oh, all the time. My friends and I love to repeat the catchphrases. It's so fun to share the jokes with others. Absolutely. It's like our own little inside jokes. What's your favorite episode so far? It's hard to pick just one, but I loved the one where they went on a road trip. That was a classic. I also enjoyed the one at the theme park. Yeah, the theme park episode was a riot. I can't get enough of this show. It's addictive, isn't it? I wish they would make more episodes. Me too. I hope it continues for a long time. Have you recommended the show to your family? Yes, and they love it too. It's a show for all ages. Everyone can enjoy the humor. I think the characters are relatable. They remind me of people I know in real life. That's what makes the show so down to earth. It's like they're part of our own lives. I'm looking forward to the next season. Me too. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Let's make sure we watch it together. Sounds like a plan. It's more fun that way. Do you think the show will win any awards? I wouldn't be surprised. It's that good. It deserves recognition for its humor. Definitely, the cast and crew work so hard. Well, I'm glad we share the same sense of humor. Me too. It's fun to discuss the show with you. Let's continue enjoying the laughs together. Absolutely. It's a great way to bond. Lesson 27 Tips for Learning English Learners. Hi there. I want to improve my English. Can you help me? Of course. I'd be happy to help. What level are you at? I'm at an A2 level, I think. I know some basics. That's a good start. Do you practice every day? No, not really. I want to start practicing daily. Great. Consistency is key. You can start by reading simple English books or articles. Any recommendations for beginner books? Sure. Try The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. It's perfect for a two learners. Thanks. What else can I do? Watching English movies or TV shows with subtitles can help you with listening. That sounds fun. Any other tips? You can also join language exchange groups online or find a language partner. Where can I find language exchange groups? Look on websites like Meetup or Tandem or even on social media. How about grammar? I struggle with it. No worries. There are many online grammar exercises and apps for A2 learners. Do you have any app recommendations? Try Duolingo or Memrise. They're great for practicing grammar and vocabulary. Thanks. I'll check those out. Should I set goals? Yes. Setting small, achievable goals can keep you motivated. Like learning a new word every day. That sounds manageable. How about speaking? Find a language partner or tutor to practice speaking with. It really helps. I'm a bit shy. Any tips for overcoming that? Start with short conversations and gradually build up your confidence. Got it. What about pronunciation? You can use YouTube videos or apps to practice pronunciation. Excellent. I'll start working on all these suggestions. Just remember, that progress takes time, so be patient with yourself. Thanks for your advice. I'm excited to improve my English. You're welcome. I'm sure you'll do great. Let's practice together sometime. Lesson 28, My College Experience Hey, have you finished all your assignments for this semester? Not yet. I still have a few more to go. How about you? Same here. 
I always procrastinate. Yeah, it's hard to stay motivated all the time. Remember our first year? Everything was so new and exciting. Yeah, it feels like it was just yesterday. Do you like your major? It's okay, but I'm thinking of changing it. Oh, really? What are you considering? I'm thinking of switching to psychology. That's interesting. I've heard it's quite challenging. Yeah, but I've always been curious about the human mind. I can see why you'd be interested in that. How about you? Are you happy with your major? I'm still not sure. I might switch too. It's never too late to explore different options. True. By the way, do you have any tips for studying effectively? Well, I find that making a study schedule really helps. I should try that. I've been so disorganized lately. And don't forget to take breaks. It's important to recharge. You're right. Burnout is no fun. Have you joined any clubs or organizations on campus? I'm in the debate club. How about you? I joined the environmental club. It's been a great way to meet people. That's awesome. I've been thinking about joining more clubs. It's a good way to make the most of our university experience. Speaking of which, have you been to any parties recently? Not really. I've been focusing on my studies. I went to one last weekend. It was a blast. I bet it was. I need to find a balance between fun and work. Definitely. It's all about time management. I struggle with that sometimes. We all do. It's a learning process. Have you made any new friends at university? Yeah, I've met some great people in my classes. I've made a few friends, too. It's nice to have a support system. It really is. College can get lonely if you don't have friends. What do you think about our professors? Some are really good and some are not so great. I agree. It's a mixed bag. But we have to make the best of it and learn as much as we can. That's true. The education is what we make of it. Do you live on campus? No, I live off campus in a small apartment. I live in a dorm. It's convenient but noisy. I like having my own space even if it's small. Yeah, it must be nice to have some privacy. So, any plans for after graduation? I'm not sure yet. Maybe further studies or a job. I'm thinking about the same options. It's a big decision. But for now, let's focus on getting through this semester. Agreed. One step at a time. Hey, do you have any good study spots on campus? The library is always a safe bet, but I like studying at the cafe too. I find the library a bit too quiet sometimes. I prefer some background noise. Then the cafe might be perfect for you. I'll give it a try. Thanks for the tip. No problem. Anything to help you succeed. How do you handle stress during exams? I try to stay calm and not cram too much. I wish I could do that. I always end up cramming at the last minute. It's not healthy. Planning and time management are key. You're right. I need to work on that. Don't worry. You'll get better with time. Have you had any memorable experiences at university so far? Oh, many. From the first day of our study trips, it's been a roller coaster. Yeah, it's been quite the journey, and it's not over yet. That's what makes it all so exciting. You're absolutely right. University life is a unique chapter in our lives. Cherish it while it lasts. I will. And I'm glad we've shared this journey together. Me too. It's been a pleasure. Let's make the most of our time here, and who knows what the future holds. Agreed. 
The best is yet to come. Lesson 29, My Amazing Family Hi there. How's everything at home? Hey, things are good. How about you? Quite good, thanks. How's your brother doing? He's doing okay, working hard as always. And your sister? She's fine, busy with her studies. How about your parents? They're fine, thanks for asking. Your folks? They're doing well, enjoying their retirement. Any plans for the holidays? Not sure yet, probably visiting some relatives. How about you? We might have a family gathering. Have you met my cousin? I don't think so. Is he the one who lives abroad? Yeah, that's the one. He's returning home next month. That's great. My aunt just had a baby, did I tell you? No, you didn't. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy, and they named him David. Lovely name. How's your grandma doing? She's a bit unwell, but she's getting better slowly. How about your grandpa? He's doing fine and still very active for his age. That's great to hear. Do you have any cousins? Yeah, a few. One of them is studying abroad. Studying abroad must be exciting. How's your aunt doing? She's managing well. Are you close to your cousins? Quite close, especially to the ones living nearby. How about you? I have a good bond with most of them. Any family traditions you cherish? We usually have a big dinner every Sunday. Do you have any? We celebrate every birthday with a family dinner. Do you celebrate any festivals together? Yeah, we celebrate major festivals with all our relatives. What about you? We gather for Christmas and New Year's. How's your sister-in-law doing? She's doing great, thanks. How's your brother-in-law? He's doing fine, busy with his job. Do you often visit your relatives? Not as often as I'd like. How about you? We try to visit them at least once a month. Do you have family reunions? Yes, every few years. How about you? We try to have one annually. What family values do you cherish? We value spending time together. How about your family? We value honesty and respect. Any family hobbies you share? We all love hiking together. What about you? We enjoy cooking together. How often do you communicate with your family? Regularly, we chat almost every day. And you? Quite often we have a family group chat. Do you have any family conflicts? Occasionally, but we resolve them soon. How about you? Rarely, but when it happens, we talk it out. Have any memorable family trips? We had a great trip to the mountains. How about you? We had an amazing beach vacation. Do you have family heirlooms? Yes, an old watch passed down. What about you? We have a family photo album from generations. How do you support your family members? We support each other emotionally and financially. And you? We help each other out in times of need. Any family jokes or stories you often share? Yeah, we have a few funny anecdotes. Do you have any? We have this one story that always gets everyone laughing. How do you show appreciation to your family? We express gratitude and small gestures. And you? We often say thank you and show support. How do you feel about family gatherings? I love them. It's a chance to bond. And you? They're heartwarming, a time for connections. What do you admire most about your family? Their resilience and unity. How about you? Their unconditional love and support. Lesson 30, the pros and cons of being single. Hey, have you ever thought about the perks of being single? Yeah, I mean, it's nice not having to compromise on everything. You can just do what you want. 
Absolutely. And there's so much freedom. No need to check in with anyone before making plans. True, but then again, sometimes I feel a bit lonely. You know, no one to share the highs and lows with. I get that. But hey, at least we don't have to deal with annoying habits or arguments, right? That's a good point. But on the downside, there's no one to help with chores. It can get overwhelming. I guess so. But think about the financial freedom. No joint expenses, just spending on yourself. Yeah, but then there's no one to split the bills with. It can get a bit tight sometimes. Fair enough. On a positive note, being single means you have more time for personal growth and pursuing your passions. That's true. But in a relationship, you have a partner to motivate and support you in your goals. Good point. But isn't it nice not having to worry about someone else's preferences when choosing what to watch or eat? It is, but sharing those moments with someone special has its own charm, you know? Absolutely, but let's not forget the joy of not having to deal with relationship drama and heartbreaks. Fair, but then again, the support and companionship during tough times can be really comforting. Hmm, true. But there's no denying the thrill of meeting new people and the excitement of potential new romances. Agreed. Yet, the stability of a long-term relationship has its own appeal, don't you think? Yeah, I suppose. But single life means you can focus entirely on yourself without any external distractions. On the flip side, having a partner can provide a different kind of motivation to be the best version of yourself. You're right. But let's talk about the spontaneity of single life. No need to plan around someone else's schedule. That's true, but having a routine with a partner can also bring a sense of security and predictability. Fair point. But single life allows us to explore our own interests without compromise. Absolutely. Yet, a relationship can introduce you to new hobbies and experiences you might not have considered. But hey, no breakup drama in single life. No messy emotional aftermath. True, but the joy of a lasting, loving relationship is something truly special, isn't it? Yeah, you've got a point. But no one can deny the thrill of the single life adventures. Agreed. Still, having a life partner to share those adventures with can make them even more memorable. All right, fair enough. But let's not forget the simplicity of single life. No need to navigate complex emotions. Simple, yes. But the depth of emotional connection in a relationship can be incredibly fulfilling. Hmm, you're making me rethink some things. But let's talk about the independence of single life, answering to no one. Independence is great, but having someone who cares and is there for you can be a beautiful thing. Okay, but let's focus on the excitement of the unknown, the possibility of meeting someone new at any moment. Exciting indeed. Yet, building a life with someone and creating shared memories has its own magic. Well, I guess being single has its pros and cons. And being in a relationship has its own set of challenges and rewards. True that. So, what's your take on it all? I think it boils down to personal preference and what brings happiness to each individual. Both single and coupled lives have their unique charm. Lesson 31, Tips to Speak Like a Native Hi, I want to speak English like a native speaker. Can you help me? Sure, I'd love to help you improve your English. Where would you like to start? Well, how can I sound more like a native speaker? Native speakers use rising and falling intonation. It makes your speech more natural. Rising and falling, got it. And what about slang? Learning some common slang words and phrases can help you sound more like a native speaker. Any good sources for slang? You can watch English movies and listen to songs. They often use slang. Great idea. How about using contractions? Yes, native speakers use contractions like I'm, 
your, and it's a lot. It sounds more natural. I'll practice using contractions. Do you have any other tips? Try to use idiomatic expressions. They add flair to your language. Can you give me an example? Sure, like barking up the wrong tree means looking in the wrong place. That's interesting. Should I practice with native speakers? Yes, practicing with native speakers is really helpful. It helps you adapt your speech. Where can I find native speakers to practice with? You can join language exchange programs or find conversation partners online. Thanks for the tips. What about reading and writing? Reading English books and writing regularly will also improve your language skills. How much should I read and write? Reading a few pages daily and writing a paragraph or two can make a big difference. Good to know. How do I correct my mistakes? You can ask a native speaker to correct you or use grammar checking tools. I'm worried about my accent. How can I reduce it? Practicing pronunciation and listening to native speakers will help minimize your accent over time. What's the best way to boost my vocabulary? Read and listen to various materials. Keep a vocabulary journal too. I'll start a journal. Should I set goals? Setting language goals is a great idea. It keeps you motivated. What about taking English classes? Taking classes is an excellent way to learn and get feedback from a teacher. I'll look for classes in my area. How can I stay motivated? Try to find enjoyable ways to practice English, like watching movies or reading books you love. I'll make it fun. How long will it take to speak like a native? It varies, but with consistent practice, you'll see improvement over time. That's encouraging. Can you recommend some English TV shows? Sure, try watching Friends or Breaking Bad. They're popular and great for learning. Thanks. I'll check them out. How can I get rid of my shyness while speaking? It's normal to feel shy, but practicing with native speakers can help build confidence. I'll work on being more confident. How can I improve my listening skills? Listen to English podcasts, news, and watch videos without subtitles to train your ear. I'll start doing that. Any tips for public speaking? Join a public speaking club or practice speaking in front of a mirror to improve. That's a good idea. What should I do if I don't understand something? Don't be afraid to ask for clarification. Native speakers are usually happy to help. I'll keep that in mind. How can I avoid feeling overwhelmed? Take it one step at a time. Learning a language is a gradual process. Thanks for all the advice. I'm excited to start my journey to speak like a native speaker. You're welcome. Just remember, practice and patience are key. Good luck. Lesson 32, Winter Clothes Shopping Conversation. Hi, I need a warm coat for the winter. Sure. What kind of coat are you looking for? Well, something not too expensive, but still good quality. We have some affordable options that are quite warm. What's your size? I'm a medium, I think. Great. Let me show you some medium-sized coats. What color do you prefer? I usually go for dark colors like black or navy. Here's a black coat in your size. How does it feel? It's a bit tight in the shoulders. Do you have a larger size? Of course, I'll get you a large. Meanwhile, have you thought about a winter hat? I was actually looking for one. Do you have any warm hats? Yes, we have some cozy beanies. What color do you like? I'd like a gray one, please. Here's a gray beanie. Try it on. It fits perfectly. I'll take it. Excellent choice. Now, let me get that larger coat for you. Thank you. What about gloves? Do you have any? Yes, we have gloves. 
What size are your hands? I'm not sure. Probably medium? I'll bring you a medium pair. What color would you prefer? I like black gloves to match the coat. Here are the gloves. Try them on and see if they fit well. These gloves are just right. I'll take them too. Perfect. Is there anything else you're looking for to keep warm? Actually, I need a scarf to complete the outfit. We have some nice scarves. Any particular color or style you're interested in? I'm thinking of a classic plaid pattern in red and black. I believe we have one like that. Let me check. Great, thank you. Here's the red and black plaid scarf. How does it look? It's exactly what I had in mind. I'll take it as well. Wonderful. Is there anything else you need for the winter? I think that's everything. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Let me ring up your purchases for you. By the way, do you offer gift wrapping? Yes, we do. Would you like your items gift wrapped? Yes, please. It's a gift for my sister. Noted. We'll wrap everything up nicely for you. Is there a specific color or theme you'd like for the gift wrapping? How about some festive winter-themed paper? That sounds lovely. I'll make sure it's beautifully wrapped. Can I help you with anything else? No, that's all. Thanks again for your assistance. You're very welcome. Have a wonderful day, and I hope your sister loves her gifts. I hope so, too. Goodbye. Goodbye, and stay warm this winter. Lesson 33. Talking about cooking experiences. Hey, do you cook often? Yeah, I try to cook at least a few times a week. How about you? I'm not that skilled, but I manage. What kind of dishes do you usually prepare? I stick to simple recipes. I enjoy making pasta dishes or stir fries. What about you? I mostly prepare basic meals like salads or sandwiches. Cooking seems complicated at times. It can be, but with practice, it gets easier. Have you tried following recipes? I have, but I often end up making mistakes. Do you have any cooking tips? Sure. Pay attention to measurements and cooking times. It makes a difference. That makes sense. I struggle with getting the flavors right. Any advice on that? Experiment with herbs and spices. They add depth to the taste. Ah, that might be my missing ingredient. What's the most challenging dish you've cooked? I attempted a complex curry once. It took patience and precision. Impressive! I'd love to try something challenging. Any favorite kitchen gadgets? I love my blender and slow cooker. They save time and effort. What about you? I find a good knife and a cutting board essential. They make the prep work easier. Absolutely. Having quality tools matters. Do you enjoy baking at all? Not really. It feels too precise for me. How about you? I enjoy baking. It's like a science experiment in the kitchen. That's an interesting way to see it. Do you have a signature dish? I make a mean lasagna. What's your go-to dish? I can whip up a decent omelette. It's simple, but tasty. Omelettes are versatile. Cooking for others, do you find it stressful? Definitely. I worry about their reactions. How do you handle it? I focus on doing my best and sharing what I enjoy. Are there any cuisines you'd like to explore? I'm curious about Asian cuisine. What about you? I'd love to delve into Middle Eastern dishes. Any culinary disasters you've faced? I once burned a stew, thinking it needed more time. What about you? I oversalted a soup once. It was nearly inedible. Any cooking shows you follow? I watch a few, but they seem too advanced sometimes. Do you watch any? I enjoy watching and learning from cooking shows. They're quite inspiring. How do you feel about cooking for large groups? 
It's daunting. I worry about the portions and taste. What about you? I've done it a few times. Planning and prepping in advance helps. Do you think cooking is an art or a science? It feels like a bit of both, don't you think? Definitely. The creativity and precision make it a blend of art and science. What motivates you to cook? I want to improve and savor homemade meals. And you? I find joy in the process and the satisfaction of creating something delicious. Any dream cooking destination for you? Italy, to learn authentic pasta making. What about you? Japan, for its precision in sushi making. Would you consider taking cooking classes? I've thought about it. Have you attended any? Yes, I've taken a few, and they've been quite helpful. How about kitchen disasters? I've had a few, like burning cakes. And you? I've had my share, like undercooked dishes. Any family recipes you treasure? My grandma's apple pie recipe is a gem. What about you? My mom's chicken curry recipe is unbeatable. Would you call yourself a foodie? Not really. I'm still exploring different tastes. What about you? I consider myself a food enthusiast. Trying new flavors is thrilling. Do you prefer cooking alone or with company? I prefer alone with less pressure. And you? I enjoy cooking with friends. It's more fun and social. Have you tried creating your recipes? Not yet. I stick to what I know. Have you tried? I experiment occasionally. It's exciting to create something new. Do you believe in the saying, cooking is love made edible? Absolutely. It's a way to show care and affection. And you? I couldn't agree more. It's a heartfelt way to connect with others. Lesson 34 Discussing Family Background. Hey, do you have a big family? Yes, I do. I have four brothers and two sisters. What about you? Wow, that's huge. I have one sister and one brother. That's nice. Are they older or younger than you? My sister is older and my brother is younger. How about your siblings? My brothers are all older and my sisters are younger. Do you get along with your siblings? Yeah, we get along pretty well. We have our arguments, but we're close. That's good to hear. My sister and I fight a lot, but we love each other. Siblings do tend to argue sometimes. What do your parents do for a living? My dad is a teacher and my mom works at a hospital. What about your parents? My dad is a mechanic and my mom is a nurse. We're a working class family. It sounds like you have a diverse family background. Do you have any family traditions? Not really, just the usual holiday celebrations. How about you? We celebrate birthdays and holidays too, but that's about it. Are you close to your extended family, like grandparents or cousins? I'm pretty close to my grandparents. They live nearby. What about you? My cousins live far away, so we don't see them often, but we're close when we do. Do you have any family pets? No, we don't have any pets. How about you? We have a dog. He's really cute. Dogs are great. What's your family's favorite type of food? We love Italian food. How about your family? We enjoy Mexican food a lot. Tacos and burritos are our favorites. Yum, that sounds delicious. Is there a family recipe you all love? We make a special spaghetti sauce that's been in our family for generations. What about you? My mom makes the best apple pie. It's a secret family recipe. That sounds amazing. Have you ever traveled together as a family? Yeah, we've been on a few family trips. Do you travel together? We took a trip to the beach last summer. It was a lot of fun. That sounds like a great vacation. What's your family's favorite holiday? Christmas is our favorite. We exchange gifts and decorate the house.
How about your family? We love Thanksgiving. We get together, cook a big meal, and share what we're thankful for. Thanksgiving is a wonderful holiday, too. Do you have any family photos on display? Yes, we have a family photo on our living room wall. It's from our last vacation. That's nice. We have a family photo album with lots of memories. It's important to cherish those memories. Do you have any family heirlooms? Yes, we have some old family jewelry that's been passed down through generations. What about you? We have a vintage clock that belonged to my great grandparents. Family heirlooms are so precious. Is there anything else unique about your family? Well, we all have a shared love for hiking. We go on hikes together sometimes. That's great. We enjoy playing board games as a family. It's a lot of fun. Family game nights sound like a blast. Do you have any family nicknames? My mom calls me Honey, and my dad calls me Sport. What about you? My sister calls me Buddy, and my dad calls me Champ. Those are cute nicknames. Is there a family member you're closest to? I'm closest to my mom. She's my best friend. How about you? I'm closest to my older brother. We have a special bond. Family bonds are so important. Do you have any family traditions for special occasions? We always have a big barbecue for the 4th of July. It's a lot of fun. That sounds like a great tradition. We have a special cake for birthdays. Cake is a must for birthdays. Do you have any family superstitions? Not really, but my grandma is quite superstitious. She believes in good luck charms. That's interesting. We don't have any family superstitions, but we respect others' beliefs. Respect is key. Do you celebrate any cultural or religious holidays? We celebrate Easter and Diwali. How about your family? We celebrate Christmas and New Year's. It's a festive time for us. It sounds like you have a lot of fun during the holidays. Are there any family stories or legends that get passed down? My grandpa used to tell us stories about his adventures as a young man. That's fascinating. We have a legend about a family member who was a hero in the war. Family stories and legends make our history come alive. Do you have any family hobbies? We all enjoy playing musical instruments. We have jam sessions sometimes. That's cool. We like gardening together. It's relaxing. Gardening can be so peaceful. Do you have any family goals or dreams? We dream of taking a big family vacation to Europe one day. That sounds like an amazing goal. We hope to keep our family bonds strong. That's a great goal, too. Family is so important. Absolutely. Family is everything. Lesson 35. Useful tips for daily life. Hey, do you know any good tips for saving money? Absolutely. I always buy generic brands at the supermarket. They're cheaper and usually just as good. That's a good idea. I've been spending a lot on groceries lately. Any other tips? Yeah, try cooking at home more. Eating out can be expensive. Plus, it's healthier. I'm not a great cook, though. Any easy recipes you recommend? Stir-fry is simple. Just chop veggies, throw in some meat, and stir it up in a pan. Quick and tasty. Nice. I'll give it a shot. By the way, how do you stay organized? I use a to-do list. Helps me prioritize tasks and not forget anything important. I always forget to make one. Any app you recommend for that? Yeah, try Totoist. It's user-friendly and has a free version that works well. Thanks. Speaking of apps, do you know any good language learning apps? Duolingo is great for beginners. It's free and makes learning languages fun. Awesome. I've been wanting to learn Spanish. What about staying healthy? I try to exercise regularly. Even a 30-minute walk every day makes a difference. True. I've been thinking about jogging. Any tips for a beginner? 
Start slow and don't push too hard at first. Listen to your body and stay consistent. Got it. And how about staying motivated at work? Break your tasks into smaller ones. It feels great to check things off the list as you go. Good point. I struggle with time management. Any advice? Use a timer. Set it for focused work, then take short breaks. Keeps you on track. I'll try that. Changing the subject, have you found any good podcasts lately? Yeah, I love listening to TED Talks. They cover a wide range of interesting topics. Nice, I need something new for my commute. What about budget-friendly travel tips? Booking flights in advance and using public transport can save a lot. Airbnb is also usually cheaper than hotels. I'll keep that in mind for my next trip. How about reducing stress? Deep breathing helps. Take a few minutes each day to relax and clear your mind. Sounds easy enough. I get bored easily. Any book recommendations? The Alchemist is a great read. It's inspiring and not too heavy. I'll check it out. By the way, how do you handle work-life balance? I make sure to disconnect when I'm home. It's important to have time for yourself and your loved ones. True. I sometimes struggle with saying no. Any advice on that? Prioritize and be honest. If you can't take on more, it's okay to decline politely. Thanks for the advice. How about saving energy at home? Switch to LED bulbs. They use less electricity and last longer. Great idea. I'm trying to be more eco-friendly. Any other tips? Use a reusable water bottle and bags. Small changes make a big impact over time. I'll start doing that. Speaking of which, any good eco-friendly brands you recommend? Check out brands that use sustainable materials and have eco-friendly practices. Patagonia is a good one. I'll look into it. How about improving productivity at work? Set specific goals for the day and focus on one task at a time. Multitasking can be counterproductive. I'll try that. Changing gears, any good movies or TV shows you've watched recently? The Queen's Gambit on Netflix is fantastic. Engaging storyline and great characters. I need a new show. Thanks for the suggestion. On a different note, any good money-saving apps? I use Mint. It tracks your spending, helps you budget, and it's free. That sounds perfect. I'll download it. Do you have any favorite weekend activities? I enjoy hiking. It's a great way to stay active and connect with nature. Nice. I need to get outdoors more. How about dealing with difficult people at work? Stay calm, listen actively, and express your thoughts calmly. It helps in resolving conflicts. Good advice. I sometimes struggle with public speaking. Any tips? Practice, practice, practice. Start small and gradually work your way up to larger audiences. I'll give it a shot. And lastly, any advice on improving sleep quality? Keep a consistent sleep schedule, avoid caffeine before bed, and create a relaxing bedtime routine. I've been having trouble sleeping lately. I'll follow your tips. Thanks for all the useful advice. No problem. Anytime you need tips or advice, just ask. Lesson 36, talking about our childhood. Hey, do you remember our childhood? Yeah, it feels like a long time ago. What were your favorite games back then? I loved playing hide and seek. How about you? I was into building forts with my friends. Those were some great times, right? Absolutely. Do you recall our school days? Of course I remember our teachers and classmates. Who was your favorite teacher? Mrs. Smith. She made learning fun. 
I liked Mr. Johnson. He was really funny. Did you have any hobbies as a child? I used to collect stamps. How about you? I was into drawing and painting. Ah, you're quite artistic. Thanks, I haven't done it in years, though. What about family vacations? We used to go to the beach every summer. Lucky you. We mostly visited our grandparents. Family time was always special. Do you remember any childhood pranks? Oh, we used to play pranks on each other all the time. I recall the time we put a fake spider in Tim's room. That was hilarious. Did you have any pets growing up? We had a dog named Max. He was so playful. I had a cat named Whiskers. She was very independent. Pets make childhood memorable. What was your favorite childhood movie? I loved The Lion King. It was so heartwarming. I was a big fan of Toy Story. Buzz Lightyear was my hero. Did you have any childhood fears? I was scared of the dark. I always needed a nightlight. I had a fear of spiders. I'd scream every time I saw one. I remember that. How about school lunches? Oh, I hated the cafeteria food. Me too. My mom packed my lunch every day. You were lucky. My mom was always in a hurry. Remember the treehouse we built? Yes, that was our secret hideout. What was your favorite subject in school? I enjoyed art and English. Math was my strong suit. I loved solving problems. We had quite different interests. Any memorable birthdays from your childhood? My 10th birthday party was amazing. We had a clown. I had a surprise party when I turned 13. It was so much fun. Birthdays were a big deal back then. Did you have any childhood crushes? Oh, I had a crush on Amy from our class. I had a crush on Ryan. He was so pretty. Childhood crushes were so innocent. Do you remember our first day of school? I was so nervous I didn't want to go. I felt the same way, but it turned out to be fun. Childhood memories are treasures. Indeed, they shape who we are today. Thanks for walking down memory lane with me. Anytime, old friend. Lesson 37, Music Volume Dilemma Saturation. Hey there, I was thinking of playing some music. Do you mind if I turn up the volume a bit? Well, I appreciate music, but I'm not a big fan of loud music. It's quite bothersome, to be honest. Oh, I didn't realize it would bother you. How can we find a solution that works for both of us? Maybe we can compromise. Could you use headphones or keep the volume down a bit? I guess I could use headphones when you're around, and I'll keep the volume lower when I'm not wearing them. That sounds fair. I'd appreciate it. Great. I'll be mindful of the volume then. Thanks for understanding. Thanks for being considerate. Now let's find some music that we both enjoy. Absolutely. We can create a playlist with some lower volume tracks. Sounds like a plan. Let's find some good songs. How about some mellow jazz or acoustic songs? They're usually not too loud. Jazz works for me. It's relaxing and won't disturb the neighbors. Perfect. I'll cue up some jazz tunes. Thanks. This way, we can both enjoy the music without any issues. I'm glad we could come to an agreement. It's essential to maintain a peaceful living environment. Definitely. It's all about being considerate of each other's preferences. By the way, what's your favorite type of music? I'm into classical music and a bit of indie rock. How about you? I'm more into electronic and pop, but I can appreciate some classical music too. That's cool. 
Maybe we can explore each other's music taste sometime. Absolutely. It's a great way to discover new music. So, how's the volume level with the headphones on? It's perfect for me. I can enjoy my music without disturbing you. That's good to hear. And when you're not using headphones, just keep it at a reasonable volume. Of course, I'll make sure it's not too loud. We'll find the right balance. Thanks for understanding and for being a considerate neighbor. No problem at all. I want our living situation to be pleasant for both of us. I appreciate that. It's important to communicate and find solutions. You're absolutely right. Communication is key in resolving such issues. Agreed. It's always better to talk things out and find common ground. I'm glad we were able to do that. It makes living here more enjoyable. Me too. It's nice when people are willing to work together for a harmonious environment. So, any specific classical music pieces you enjoy? I love Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata and Mozart's Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. Great choices. I'll give them a listen and see if they grow on me. And if you have any electronic or pop songs you think I might like, feel free to share them. Will do. Sharing music is a fun way to connect. Indeed, it's a universal language that brings people together. I'm looking forward to enjoying some good music together. Likewise, it's going to be a pleasant living arrangement from now on. Thanks again for your understanding and willingness to compromise. You're welcome. It's all about being good neighbors and friends. I couldn't agree more. Let's keep the music flowing at the right volume. Sounds like a plan. Here's to a harmonious home. Lesson 38, Winter Vocabulary. Hi there. I've been trying to improve my English, and I'm wondering if you could help me learn some vocabulary related to the winter season. Of course, I'd be happy to help. Winter vocabulary is a great place to start. Let's begin with some basics. Great. So, what's the word for the cold period of the year with snow and ice? That's winter. It's the season between autumn and spring. Got it. And what's the white stuff that falls from the sky during winter? It's called snow. People often play in it and build snowmen. Snow, got it. What about those tiny pieces of frozen rain? Those are called sleet. They're like tiny icy pellets that can make roads slippery. Thanks. And what's the word for the frozen water that covers the ground? That's ice. Be careful, as it can be slippery and dangerous. I see. Are there any winter sports-related words you can share? Sure. How about skiing and snowboarding? They're popular winter sports where people glide on snow. That sounds fun. What's the word for those cozy clothes we wear in winter? You mean winter clothing or winter attire? It includes things like coats, scarves and gloves. Right. And what about the headgear that keeps you warm? That's a hat or a beanie. They keep your head warm in cold weather. Perfect. Do people celebrate any holidays during winter? Yes, they do. Christmas and New Year's are two major holidays in the winter season. What about the festive decorations and lights? Those are called holiday decorations and Christmas lights. They make the season feel more festive. Nice. Are there any special foods associated with winter? Absolutely. People often enjoy hot chocolate and soup to keep warm in the cold weather. Hot chocolate is so comforting. And what's the word for a shelter made of ice and snow? That's an igloo. In some places, people build them as temporary shelters. Interesting. Is there a term for the feeling of being trapped indoors due to the cold weather? 
Yes, it's called cabin fever. It's when you feel restless from being inside for too long. I've heard of that before. Can you tell me a word for a person who enjoys cold weather and winter activities? That person is often called a winter enthusiast or a cold weather lover. I'm learning a lot. Is there a word for a winter storm with strong winds and blowing snow? Yes, that's a blizzard. They can be quite severe and cause travel disruptions. Thanks for all this information. I appreciate your help with my English learning. You're welcome. Keep practicing and you'll become fluent in no time. Enjoy your journey with the English language. Lesson 39 Halloween Day Plans Hey, do you have any plans for Halloween this year? Yeah, I'm thinking of having a small get-together at my place. You? I might go trick-or-treating with my kids. They're really excited. That sounds fun. Are you dressing up too? Of course, I'll be a witch. How about you? Any costume plans? I'm thinking of going as a zombie. Should be easy to put together. Nice choice. Are you decorating your house for the occasion? Yeah, I'll put up some spooky decorations and carve some pumpkins. Sounds great. I plan to make some Halloween treats like cookies and cupcakes. Yum. Mind sharing your recipes with me? Sure, I can send them to you. Thanks. Are you going to watch any scary movies? Yeah, after trick-or-treating, we'll have a movie night with some classic horror films. Count me in. I love Halloween movies. Are you going to any haunted houses? Not this year. My kids are still too young for that. Understandable. I might check out a local haunted attraction, though. That sounds thrilling. Make sure to share your experience. Will do. Are you planning any games or activities for the kids? Yes, we'll have a pumpkin carving contest and a costume parade. That sounds like a blast. What's your favorite part of Halloween? I love the creativity that goes into costumes and decorations. Me too. It's all about the spooky fun. Do you have any spooky music playlists? Yeah, I'm putting together a Halloween-themed playlist for the party. Awesome. I'll bring some snacks to your get-together. Thanks. That would be great. Are you making any special drinks? I'm planning to make a punch with dry ice for a smoky effect. That's going to be a hit. What time does your party start? Around 7 p.m. When's your trick-or-treating plan? We'll start early, around 5 p.m., and wrap up by 7 p.m. Sounds good. I hope you get lots of candy. Are you doing any charity work on Halloween? Yes, I'm donating some candy to the local food bank for those in need. That's really thoughtful. I might do the same. It's important to give back. Absolutely. Halloween is not just about fun, but also spreading joy. You're right. Well, I'm looking forward to your party. It's going to be a spooktacular night. Thanks. It's going to be a night to remember. Can't wait. Same here. Let's make it a memorable Halloween. Lesson 40. The Amazing Benefits of Reading Books Hey, have you ever thought about why reading books is so important? Yeah, I guess it helps you improve your vocabulary, right? Absolutely. It broadens your vocabulary and enhances your language skills. Plus, it's a great way to escape reality for a while. True. Reading fiction lets you explore different worlds and experiences. And it's not just about fiction. Non-fiction books provide valuable information and knowledge. Right. Reading helps you stay informed about various topics. It also improves your concentration, doesn't it? Definitely. When you read, you focus on the words and ideas in front of you. I've heard it can reduce stress, too. Absolutely. 
It's like a mental escape that relaxes your mind. So, reading is like a workout for the brain? Exactly. It keeps your brain active and engaged. And it's a cheap hobby too. Books are often more affordable than other forms of entertainment. That's a good point. Plus, you can find books on almost any topic imaginable. It also improves your empathy, right? You get to see things from different perspectives. Yes, reading about different characters and their experiences helps you understand people better. And it enhances your writing skills. You learn how to express yourself effectively. Absolutely. It's like learning from the best authors out there. I've heard reading can improve your sleep. Something about it being a bedtime routine. Yes, it relaxes your mind, making it easier to fall asleep. And it's a great conversation starter. You can discuss books with people and exchange ideas. True. It's a common ground for many interesting conversations. Do you think it can make you more creative? Definitely. Exposure to different ideas and perspectives sparks creativity. I guess it also boosts your self-esteem. Finishing a book feels like an accomplishment. Absolutely. It gives you a sense of achievement. Do you think it helps with problem-solving skills? It does. Reading often involves analyzing situations and finding solutions with the characters. I've heard that it slows down cognitive decline as you age. Yes, it keeps your brain active and can prevent mental decline. And it's a lifelong hobby. You can enjoy it at any age. That's true. It's a timeless source of enjoyment. Do you think it makes you more open-minded? Definitely. Reading exposes you to different cultures and perspectives, fostering open-mindedness. I like that. It sounds like there are so many benefits to reading. Absolutely. It's like a magic potion for the mind. Lesson 41, Introducing Strangers. Excuse me? Do you have the time? Oh, sure. It's 3.30 p.m. By the way, I'm John. Nice to meet you. Thanks, John. I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you, too. Lisa, are you from around here? No, I'm not. I just moved to this city last month. What about you? I've been living here for years. I work at the tech company downtown. How about you? I'm a teacher. I found a job at the local school. That's great. What do you teach? I teach English to high school students. What's your job at the tech company? I'm a software engineer. It can be challenging, but I enjoy it. That sounds interesting. So, how do you like the city? I like it a lot. There's so much to do here. Have you explored it much? Not yet. I've been quite busy settling in. Any recommendations? You should visit the downtown area. Lots of restaurants and shops. Do you enjoy trying new foods? Yes, I do. I'll check it out. What's your favorite restaurant? There's a great Italian place called Pasta Italia that I love. You should give it a try. Thanks for the suggestion, John. I'll make a note of it. How about hobbies? Do you have any? I enjoy hiking and playing the guitar. What about you, Lisa? I like reading and painting in my free time. It's quite relaxing. That's wonderful. What type of books do you usually read? I enjoy mystery novels and sometimes historical fiction. How about you? I like science fiction and fantasy. Do you have any favorite authors? Agatha Christie is my favorite. Her mysteries are so captivating. What about you? I'm a big fan of J.R.R. Tolkien. His fantasy worlds are amazing. Those are great choices. So, do you have any family here in the city? Yes, I live with my wife and two kids. How about you, Lisa? It's just me and my cat. No family in this city. Well, I hope you're enjoying your new job in the city despite that. 
I am. Thank you. Everyone has been very welcoming. That's good to hear. If you ever need help or have questions about the city, feel free to ask me. I appreciate that, John. It's been nice talking to you. Likewise, Lisa. Have a great day. You too, John. Goodbye. Lesson 42. Let's talk winter sports. Hey, do you like winter sports? Yeah, I love them. Skiing is my favorite. Oh, skiing. I've always wanted to try that. Is it difficult? It can be challenging at first, but it's so much fun. I think I'd be scared of falling. Don't worry. Everyone falls when they start. It's part of the learning process. That's reassuring. Where do you usually go skiing? I go to the mountains. There are great ski resorts there. Sounds amazing. What about snowboarding? Snowboarding is cool too, but I prefer skiing. Is it because skiing is easier? I find skiing more comfortable, but it's a personal preference. I guess it's all about balance, right? Exactly. Balance is crucial in skiing. What equipment do you need for skiing? You'll need skis, boots, poles, and appropriate clothing. How about safety gear? A helmet and goggles are a must for safety. Good to know. How do you stop on skis? You can use the snowplow technique. It's easy to learn. And how fast can you go while skiing? You can control your speed so it's up to you. What's your favorite part about skiing? I love the feeling of gliding down the slopes in the fresh mountain air. Sounds wonderful. What about ice skating? Ice skating is fun too, especially if you enjoy graceful movements. Have you ever tried figure skating? I haven't, but I admire the skill and elegance of figure skaters. Ice hockey is another popular winter sport, right? Yes, it's fast-paced and intense. Some people love it. I've always been curious about curling. Do you know it? Yes, it's like a winter version of bowling, and it's quite strategic. That's intriguing. What do you need for curling? You need special shoes and a broom, plus the stones. I might give that a try. What's your favorite winter sport memory? One time I skied down a mountain in fresh powder snow. It was magical. I can imagine how beautiful that must have been. Any tips for beginners? Take a lesson, start on easy slopes, and practice your balance. I'll keep that in mind. Have you ever been to a winter sports event? Yes, I've watched a skiing competition live. It was thrilling. That sounds exciting. Are there any famous skiers you admire? I look up to Lindsey Vaughn. She's an amazing athlete. Do you follow the Winter Olympics? Absolutely. I never miss the skiing events during the Olympics. It's always a great show. What's the best time to go skiing? The winter season, when the slopes are covered in snow. Do you have a favorite ski resort? I love going to Aspen. It's stunning there. I hope to experience that beauty one day. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. If you ever decide to try skiing, I'd be happy to join you on the slopes. Lesson 43, Exploring the World of Esports. Hey, have you ever played any video games? Yeah, I like playing esports. It's so much fun. Really? Which game is your favorite? I'm into League of Legends. It's a super popular MOBA. Oh, I've heard of it. Is it difficult to play? At first, yeah, but you get the hang of it. Want to try it sometime? Maybe. I prefer first-person shooters like Counter-Strike. Ah, CSGO. That's a classic. I enjoy watching the tournaments. Me too. The pro players are so skilled.
Did you catch the recent championship? It was intense. Unfortunately, I missed it. Who won? Fnatic took the trophy this time. Their strategies were impressive. Nice. I'll have to watch the highlights. Who's your favorite player? I really like Faker from League of Legends. His plays are legendary. Faker, huh? I'll look him up. I'm more into S1 MPL from CSGO. Oh, S1 MPL is a beast. His aim is insane. Totally. Do you play with friends or solo? Mostly with friends. It's more fun that way. How about you? Same here. Teamwork makes the game more enjoyable. Have you ever been to a live esports event? No, but I'd love to experience the hype. It's amazing. The energy in the arena is unreal. Which teams do you usually support? I'm a fan of Cloud9 and CSGO and T1 in League of Legends. Cool choices. I lean towards Astralis and G2. Nice. Both are strong teams. Do you follow any esports news? Not really. Any interesting stories lately? Well, there's been some roster changes and drama in the scene. Drama? That's surprising. What happened? Some players switched teams and there were disagreements. That happens in every sport, I guess. Keeps things exciting. True. The esports scene is always evolving. Do you think esports will become as big as traditional sports? It's getting there. The fan base is growing rapidly. It would be cool to see esports on TV more often. ESPN airs some tournaments. Esports is gaining recognition. That's awesome. Maybe my parents will finally understand it. Yeah, explaining esports to non gamers can be tricky. Have you ever considered joining a local esports club? I haven't, but it sounds interesting. Are you part of one? Yeah, it's a great way to connect with other gamers. I'll look into it. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. Maybe we can team up sometime. That sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Lesson 44, my first day at school. Hi there, I'm Sarah. I'm new here. Hey Sarah, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our school. Thanks, Alex. I'm a bit nervous. Can you tell me about the school? Of course. It's not too big, but we have great teachers and a friendly atmosphere. What's your major? I'm majoring in English literature. How about you? I'm studying psychology. I've been here for two years now. What made you choose this school? Well, I heard the English department here is fantastic, and it's not too far from home. How do you find the classes? Most classes are interesting, and the professors are usually helpful. Are you taking any extracurricular activities? I was thinking about joining the debate club. Have you been part of any clubs? I joined the photography club last year. It's a great way to make friends. Speaking of which, are you looking for a study group? Definitely. I'd love to study with others. Any recommendations for good study spots on campus? The library is a quiet and popular choice. Also, the student lounge is cozy and has comfy chairs. How about you? Do you have any tips for new students? Well, I've only been here a day, but I've already learned that everyone is really friendly and it's easy to ask for help. Do you know any good places to eat around here? Sure. There's a nice cafe just around the corner. They have great sandwiches. We can grab lunch there sometime. Sounds good, Alex. Thanks for being so welcoming. No problem, Sarah. If you ever need help or have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your time here. Lesson 45, Planning Diwali Day. Hey, what are your Diwali plans this year? Oh, I'm thinking of having a small gathering at home. How about you? I'm planning to visit my relatives and exchange gifts. What about decorations? I'm going for traditional diyas and some colorful rangoli. What's on your list? 
I'm thinking of lighting up the house with fairy lights and lanterns. How about the festive food? I'm preparing sweets and some savory snacks. What's your menu like? I'm making traditional sweets like gulab jamun and some crispy samosas. What's your favorite Diwali tradition? I love bursting fireworks and playing games with family. How about you? I enjoy lighting sparklers and exchanging good wishes. What's your plan for the auspicious day? I'll start with prayers at the temple and then have a family dinner. What about you? I'll do the morning prayers and then visit friends to share the festive joy. Are you exchanging gifts? Yes, I've prepared gift baskets with sweets and candles. What's your gift plan? I'm thinking of giving personalized items and some decorative pieces. What's the most significant aspect of Diwali for you? For me, it's the coming together of family and spreading happiness. How about you? I find the positivity and the spirit of togetherness most meaningful. Any special clothing for the day? I'll wear traditional attire. What about you? I'm planning to dress in vibrant ethnic wear. Are you attending any community events? Not this time. How about you? I might visit a local celebration in the evening. Are you planning any cultural performances? No, but I'll play some festive music. What about you? I've made a playlist of traditional songs to enjoy with friends. How long do you usually celebrate Diwali? Usually a day or two. How about you? Same here. A day filled with festivities and joy. Are you making any special drinks? Just some traditional spiced tea. What's your plan for the evening? I'll have a small family dinner and watch fireworks. How do you wrap up your Diwali celebration? I wind down with some prayers and reflection. What about you? I usually end with exchanging heartfelt wishes and gratitude. What's your most memorable Diwali experience? The time when all my family gathered after a long time. How about you? It was when I hosted my first Diwali celebration. What's your wish for this Diwali? I wish for happiness and prosperity for everyone. What about you? I wish for peace and joy to fill everyone's hearts. Lesson 46. The Joy of Hobbies and Interests Hey, what do you like to do in your free time? Well, I'm into reading. I enjoy books and novels. That's cool. I'm more into sports. I play basketball every weekend. Basketball sounds fun. I've tried it a few times, but I'm not very good at it. Practice makes perfect, you know. What else are you interested in? I like painting. It's relaxing. I'm terrible at art, but I love watching movies. Do you have a favorite genre? I'm a fan of romantic comedies. How about you? Action and sci-fi movies are my go-to. Have you traveled anywhere interesting lately? Not recently, but I love traveling. I went to Paris a few years ago. Paris must have been amazing. I prefer exploring nature, like hiking in the mountains. Hiking sounds adventurous. Do you have any favorite hiking spots? Yeah, I love the trails in the nearby national park. What's your favorite thing about painting? I find it therapeutic. Expressing myself through colors and strokes is so satisfying. I can see how that's calming. Reading must take you to different worlds, right? Absolutely. It's like escaping reality for a while. What about basketball? What do you like about it? It's a great way to stay active and make new friends. Plus, the competitive aspect is exciting. I can see the appeal in that. Do you have any other hobbies? I also enjoy cooking. Trying out new recipes is a lot of fun. Cooking is a useful skill. I wish I was better at it. Have you tried painting before? I've attempted it a few times, but my art skills are limited. I prefer enjoying the work of talented artists. Well, there's no right or wrong in art. It's all about expressing yourself. How about you? Have you ever picked up a book? 
I read occasionally, usually nonfiction. I like learning new things. Nonfiction can be very informative. What's the last book you read? I recently finished a book about space exploration. It was fascinating. Space is so intriguing. Have you ever stargazed? Yeah, I've done some stargazing. It's a great way to connect with what I read in books. I'd love to join you for stargazing sometime. Do you have any upcoming travel plans? Not at the moment, but I'm considering a road trip to the coast next summer. How about you? I'm thinking of visiting some art galleries in the city. It's been a while since I did that. That sounds like a great plan. I hope you discover some inspiring art. Have you been to any sports events? I've watched a few basketball games with friends. The atmosphere in the stadium is electric. It's definitely different from playing. I love the adrenaline rush during a game. Any other interests? I enjoy gardening. Taking care of plants is so fulfilling. Gardening is a fantastic way to connect with nature. What do you grow in your garden? Mostly flowers and some herbs. I find the aroma of fresh herbs so comforting. Herbs are handy in cooking, too. It seems like we have quite a range of hobbies and interests. Indeed. It's nice to learn about what others are passionate about. Absolutely. Sharing our interests makes for great conversations. It does. Maybe we can try out some of each other's hobbies sometime. That sounds like a fun idea. I'd love to try painting, and you can teach me. Sure, and you can show me the ropes of basketball. Lesson 47, Common Slangs and Meaning. Hey, do you know any English slang words? Yeah, sure. Slang is like informal language, you know? Informal? What's that mean? It means it's not too proper, more like everyday talk. So, cool is slang for awesome. Cool? What's awesome? Awesome means really great. It's like saying something is amazing. Got it. What about lit? I heard that a lot. Lit means something is exciting or really fun. Like, the party was lit. Oh, I see. And what's broke? Broke means having no money. Like, I can't go out tonight, I'm broke. Thanks. What's chill? Chill means relaxed or calm. Like, let's just chill at home tonight. How about sick? Sick is a bit tricky. It can mean something's awesome, but it can also mean you're not feeling well. Context matters. All right. Tell me about bay. Bay is a cute way to say before anyone else. It's like calling someone your special person. On fleek? I heard that too. On fleek means something is perfect or looks great. Like, her makeup is on fleek. What's FOMO? FOMO stands for fear of missing out. It's when you're worried about not being where the fun is. YOLO is another one, right? Yes. YOLO is you only live once. People use it to say they want to enjoy life. Thanks, that's helpful. How about hanging out? Hanging out means spending time together casually, without any specific plan. And chillax. Chillax is a mix of chill and relax. It means to take it easy and relax. Got it. What's Ghana? Ghana is short for going to. It's used for future actions, like, I'm going to eat pizza. Tell me about Wana. Wana is short for want to. It's used when you're talking about something you want to do, like, I want to watch a movie. Thanks. What's ain't? Ain't is a slang word for isn't, aren't, or am not. It's not very formal. And dunno. Dunno is short for don't know. It's like saying you have no idea. Great, thanks. How about gimme? Gimme is short for give me. 
It's used when you want someone to give you something. Kinda. Kinda is short for kind of. It's used to say something is somewhat true, like, I'm kinda tired. And sorta. Sorta is short for sort of. It's similar to kinda. It means something is partially true. Thanks for explaining all these slang words. You're welcome. Slang can be fun to use in casual conversations. Just remember to use it appropriately. Lesson 48, discussing last night's football match. Hey, did you catch the football match last night? Yeah, I did. It was amazing, wasn't it? Absolutely. The teams played really well. I agree. They showed good teamwork. That goal in the first half was fantastic. Yeah, it was a great shot. And the goalkeeper made some excellent saves. He did a fantastic job protecting the goal. Did you see the red card in the second half? Yeah, the referee had to send off a player. It changed the dynamics of the game. Definitely, it became more challenging for the team with 10 players. The crowd was so enthusiastic. The atmosphere in the stadium was electric. Did you like the halftime show? Yeah, the cheerleaders were entertaining. And the food at the stadium was delicious. I couldn't resist having some hot dogs. How about that penalty kick they missed? It was a close call, but the ball hit the post. They were so unlucky. It could have changed the outcome. What's your favorite team? I'm a fan of the home team. I support the away team. That's why we're rivals. Indeed. It makes watching matches together fun. True, the banter and competition add excitement. Who do you think was the MVP of the match? The striker played exceptionally well. Yeah, he scored a crucial goal. And the captain's leadership was impressive. They deserve the win. It was a hard-fought victory. Do you play football yourself? Yeah, I play with friends on weekends. That's cool. I used to play when I was younger. It's a great way to stay active. Who's your favorite player? I admire Messi. He's so skillful. Messi is a legend, no doubt. How about you? Any favorite player? Ronaldo has always been my favorite. He's a goal-scoring machine. I wish I could watch him play live someday. Me too. That would be a dream come true. Let's catch another match next week. Definitely. I wouldn't miss it for anything. It's always a great time to discuss football with you. Same here. It's our little tradition. Well, until next time, my football buddy. Looking forward to it. See you soon. Lesson 49, Goals and Dreams. Hey, how's everything going with you? Not too bad, thanks. I've been thinking a lot about my goals and dreams lately. Oh, that's interesting. What are they? Well, I've always wanted to travel more. Seeing new places is a big dream of mine. That sounds amazing. Where would you like to go? I'd love to visit Italy. The culture and food there are so appealing. Italy is beautiful. I hope you make it there someday. Thanks. What about you? What are your goals and dreams? I've been working on a novel. My dream is to become a published author one day. That's so cool. What's your novel about? It's a mystery novel set in a small town. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to read it when it's finished. I hope you get to visit Italy soon. Do you have a plan? I'm saving money, and I'm looking for good travel deals. That's a great start. You'll get there. 
I really hope so. How about your writing? Any plans to publish soon? I'm still in the editing phase. I hope to query literary agents soon. Best of luck with that. It's a big step towards your dream. Thanks. I appreciate the support. So, what else do you dream of? Well, I also want to learn a new language. Spanish, maybe. Learning a new language is a fantastic goal. It opens up so many opportunities. I think it would be beneficial, and it's something I've always wanted. Have you started learning yet? I've been using some language learning apps. It's slow progress, though. Progress takes time, so don't be too hard on yourself. You're right. I'll keep at it. What's another goal of yours? I'd like to be more active. Maybe take up hiking or biking. Staying active is a great goal for a healthy life. Yeah, and it can be a lot of fun too. Do you have any fitness goals? I'd like to start jogging regularly. It's a simple way to stay in shape. That's a good plan. I'm sure you'll feel better once you get started. I hope so. What about your travels? Any specific places you want to visit? I've always dreamed of going to Japan. The culture and history there fascinate me. Japan is on my list too. It seems like a unique experience. Definitely. And I'd love to taste authentic sushi in Japan. That's a delicious dream. I hope we both get to visit our dream destinations. I'm sure we will. Dreams can come true with dedication and hard work. You're right. Let's keep pushing towards our goals and dreams. Lesson 50 Exploring the Wonders of Movies. Hey, do you fancy catching a film tonight? Sure, sounds good. What kind of movie are you in the mood for? Well, I was thinking of a comedy, something light and fun. Oh, great idea. I could use a good laugh. Any specific movie in mind? How about that new romantic comedy that's out? I heard it's hilarious. Sounds good to me. What's it called? Love and Laughter. It's got good reviews. Awesome. Where is it playing? It's showing at the cinema downtown. We could grab tickets on the way. Perfect. What time does it start? The next showing is at 7.30 p.m. Does that work for you? Yeah, that's fine. Let's aim to get there a bit early. Agreed. We can grab some popcorn and find good seats. By the way, have you seen the trailer for Love and Laughter? Yeah, I watched it online. It looks hilarious, right? Absolutely. I can't wait to see it. Who are the main actors? I think it's Jennifer Adams and Mark Thompson. They have great chemistry on screen. I like their work. Should be a good time. Definitely. Have you been to this cinema before? No, it'll be my first time. Is it easy to find? Yeah, it's right next to the mall. We won't miss it. Cool. And parking? There's a parking lot nearby, so we should be fine. Great. Thanks for the info. Oh, speaking of malls, maybe we can grab a quick bite before the movie? Good idea. There's a nice cafe near the cinema. We can grab a snack there. Perfect. I'm getting excited about this movie night. Me too. It's been a while since I've been to the cinema. Same here. Movies are such a good way to relax. Totally agree. Plus, it's a nice break from our hectic schedules. So true. Hey, do you usually prefer watching movies at home or in the cinema? I like both, but there's something special about the cinema experience, you know? Absolutely. The big screen and the surround sound make a difference. And the atmosphere. It's fun being with a crowd and sharing the laughs. Right. I remember the last time we watched a comedy together. We couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, that was a blast. 
Hopefully, love and laughter delivers the same laughs. I'm sure it will. All right, let's grab those tickets and make it a memorable movie night. Sounds like a plan. See you at 7 p.m.? Perfect. Looking forward to it. Lesson 51, Sharing Daily Life at Dinner Hey, how was your day at work? It was okay. Just the usual stuff. How about you? Mine was busy too. I had a lot of meetings. So, did you get any interesting tasks today? Not really. Just some paperwork and emails to deal with. By the way, how's your new project going? It's moving along. We're making progress, but it's a lot of work. I can imagine. So, is anything exciting happening in the office? Well, we're having a team building event next week. It should be fun. That sounds cool. I hope I can join too. You should come. It'll be great to have you there. Thanks, I'll consider it. By the way, did you catch up with that TV show you were watching? No, not yet. I've been so busy lately. How about you? Watch anything interesting? I started a new series. It's about detectives solving crimes. That sounds interesting. What's it called? It's called Mystery Files. I think you'd like it. I'll check it out. So, have you been to the gym recently? Not as much as I'd like. I missed a couple of sessions this week. Don't worry, we all have those days. I find it hard to stay motivated too. Yeah, it can be a challenge, but I'm trying to keep up with it. That's the spirit. I need to get back on track with my workouts too. We could motivate each other. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Oh, did you see the weather forecast for the weekend? I haven't checked. What's it looking like? They say it's going to be sunny. Perfect for a little outdoor adventure. Sounds great. Maybe we can plan a hike or a picnic. That would be lovely. I miss spending time outdoors. Me too. It's been too long. So, any exciting plans for the weekend? Not really. I might just relax and catch up on some reading. That sounds nice. I could use some relaxation too. You should join me. We can share some book recommendations. I'd love that. I've been looking for a good book to read. Speaking of books, I found a great bookstore downtown. It's filled with classics. Really? We should go together sometime. Absolutely. It's a cozy place with a cafe inside. We can grab some coffee too. That sounds perfect. I'm in. Great. And how's your family doing? They're good. My mom called me today to catch up. That's nice. I miss my family. I should give them a call this weekend. Family is important. It's always good to stay connected. You're right. So, what's new with you? Any other exciting news? Not really. Just the usual routine. How about you? Any plans for your birthday next month? I haven't decided yet. Maybe a small gathering with friends. It's still a few weeks away. Well, count me in. I'll make sure to bring a nice birthday gift. Thanks. That would be awesome. So, what do you think of the food tonight? It's delicious. I love your cooking. What's the secret to this recipe? It's just a family recipe I learned from my grandmother. It's fantastic. You should share it with me sometime. I'd be happy to. It's all about the right spices and a bit of patience. I'll remember that. Thanks for the meal. It's been a great evening. You're welcome. I always enjoy our dinners together. Likewise. Let's do it again soon. Lesson 52, talking about our favorite authors. Hey, have you read that new book by our favorite author? Yeah, I did. It was amazing. I couldn't put it down. Totally agree. 
What do you think makes this author so good? Well, the way they describe things is just perfect. It's like I'm right there in the story. Right? The characters feel so real. Which book is your favorite? I think it's hard to choose, but maybe the one about the detective. It kept me guessing until the end. Oh, I love that one too. The twists and turns were unexpected. Absolutely. And the author's writing style is so easy to follow. I never felt lost. Yeah, it's not too complicated, but still keeps you hooked. Do you know if they're working on a new book? I heard some rumors about it. Can't wait. I hope it's as good as the others. Same here. I always look forward to their new releases. It's like a literary event for me. And the way they explore different themes in each book is impressive. It's not just one type of story. Right. Diversity in themes keeps it interesting. Do you recommend this author to others? Absolutely. I've already told my friends to check them out. Everyone should experience their writing. It's great to share the love for good books. What other authors do you enjoy? Well, I like a mix of genres, but this author is definitely at the top of my list. How about you? Same here. I do enjoy exploring different genres, but this author's consistency is something special. And the way they create a connection between the reader and the characters is remarkable. Yeah, you feel like you're going through the ups and downs with them. It's a unique talent. Have you ever attended any book events or signings with this author? I wish. Unfortunately, I haven't had the chance. Have you? Yeah, I went to a book signing last year. Got my copy autographed. Best day ever. That's awesome. I need to keep an eye out for any upcoming events. Meeting them would be a dream. It's worth it if you get the chance. They're so down to earth and genuinely appreciate their readers. That's good to know. It makes the reading experience even more special. Absolutely. By the way, do you prefer ebooks or physical copies? I like the feel of a physical book, you know, but ebooks are convenient when I'm on the go. What about you? Same. Nothing beats the smell of a new book, but ebooks are so handy for travel. True. It's nice to have options. Hey, did you know they're adapting one of our favorite authors' books into a movie? Really? That's exciting news. I hope they do justice to the story. Fingers crossed. Sometimes movie adaptations can be a hit or miss. Yeah, but I'm hopeful. The storyline has so much potential for the big screen. Totally agree. I can't wait to see who they cast for the main characters. It's always interesting to see how your imagination matches up with the filmmaker's choices. Right? Sometimes it's spot on, and other times it's a surprise. Do you usually read the book before watching the movie? Yeah, I like to have the original story in my mind first. How about you? Same. The book usually gives more depth to the characters and plot. Agreed. It's like you get the full experience. By the way, have you ever joined a book club? Not yet, but I've been thinking about it. It could be a fun way to discover new authors and discuss different perspectives. Absolutely. It's a great way to broaden your reading horizons. Let me know if you find a good one. Will do. Maybe we could join one together. It could be a cool shared experience. I like that idea. It's always more enjoyable to share thoughts on a book with someone else. Definitely. Well, I guess we've covered everything about our favorite author. Anything else you want to add? Just that I'm grateful for the stories they've given us. It's like a literary journey every time I pick up one of their books. Couldn't have said it better myself. Here's to many more books from our favorite author. Cheers to that. Lesson 53 Talking about favorite foods. Hey, what's your favorite food? Oh, I really like pizza. It's so tasty. Pizza is great. I prefer pasta myself. 
Yeah, Italian food is awesome. What's your favorite pasta dish? I love spaghetti with meatballs. How about you? I'm a fan of lasagna. It's so cheesy and delicious. Cheese is amazing. Do you like cheeseburgers? Of course. Cheeseburgers are fantastic. What do you like on your burger? I enjoy lettuce, tomatoes, and ketchup. And you? I go for onions, pickles, and mayo. So, what about dessert? I have a sweet tooth. I love chocolate cake. How about you? I can never resist apple pie with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Yum. I also like ice cream. What's your favorite flavor? I can't get enough of chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. And you? Mint chocolate chip is my top choice. Do you like any foreign dishes? Yes, I adore sushi. It's so fresh and healthy. Sushi is great. Have you tried Japanese ramen? Not yet, but I've heard it's delicious. Do you like spicy food? I do. Spicy Thai curry is one of my favorites. Thai food is fantastic. I love pad thai, especially. It's hard to resist a plate of pad thai. Have you tried Indian cuisine? Yes, I enjoy Indian food, especially chicken tikka masala. That's one of my favorites, too. How about beverages? I'm a coffee person. I can't start my day without it. How about you? I prefer tea, especially green tea. So, what's for breakfast? I usually go for a classic American breakfast with bacon and eggs. That's hearty. I like a light breakfast with yogurt and fruit. Healthy choice. What about snacks during the day? I like munching on popcorn while watching movies. You? I often grab a bag of potato chips. They're so addictive. True that. What's your favorite fruit? I'm a big fan of strawberries. They're so sweet. Strawberries are delicious. I like bananas for a quick snack. Bananas are great. Do you like Mexican food? Absolutely. Tacos are my weakness. How about you? I can't resist a good burrito with guacamole. So tasty. Burritos are fantastic. Have you ever tried Chinese food? Yes, I love Chinese takeout. General Tso's chicken is my go-to. General Tso's chicken is a winner. I like sweet and sour pork. Sweet and sour pork is tasty. So, what's for dinner tonight? I'm planning to make some homemade spaghetti. How about you? I think I'll order a pizza. It's quick and easy. Enjoy your pizza and I'll savor my spaghetti. Lesson 54. Learn common English idioms and their meanings. Hi, can you tell me some common English idioms and what they mean? Sure. An idiom is a group of words with a special meaning. Let's start with break a leg. It means good luck. Break a leg? That's strange. Can you give an example? Of course. If you're going to a job interview, you can say, I hope I break a leg for good luck. Got it. How about piece of cake? That means something is very easy. Like, the test was a piece of cake. So, if something is difficult, can I say, it's a hard nut to crack? Exactly. It's a hard nut to crack means it's challenging. For instance, math can be a hard nut to crack. I see. How about bite the bullet? Bite the bullet means facing a difficult situation bravely. For example, when going to the dentist, you might say, I need to bite the bullet. Thanks. What's don't cry over spilled milk? It means don't worry about things you can't change. If you drop your ice cream, don't cry over spilled milk. Good advice. What about hit the hay? Hit the hay means going to bed. When you're tired, you can say, I'm going to hit the hay. Don't count your chickens before they hatch? What's that? It means don't make plans based on something that might not happen. For instance, 
Don't buy a car before you win the lottery. Makes sense. How about the ball is in your court? It means it's your turn to make a decision or take action. Like in a group project, you can say, the ball is in your court to choose the topic. Break the ice. It means to start a conversation with someone you don't know well to make things more comfortable. I tried to break the ice at the party by asking about their hobbies. Thanks for explaining these idioms. You're welcome. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Lesson 55. Understanding the difference. Assets versus liabilities. Hey, have you ever wondered about assets and liabilities? Yeah, a bit. Assets are things you own that have value, right? Exactly. Like your house or car. They're assets because they can be sold for money. Oh, got it. And liabilities are debts or something? You nailed it. Liabilities are what you owe, like loans or credit card debt. So, assets increase your wealth and liabilities do the opposite? That's the basic idea. If your assets are worth more than your liabilities, you're in good shape financially. What about things like jewelry or electronics? Are they assets? Yep, they can be. If they hold value and can be sold, they're considered assets. But what if I take a loan to buy a car? Is the car still an asset? Good question. In that case, the car is still an asset, but the loan becomes a liability. So, it's not just about what you own, but also what you owe. Precisely. Your net worth is what you own, minus what you owe. I see. It's like a financial balance then. Absolutely. And it's essential to have more assets than liabilities for financial stability. Makes sense. What about investments? Are they assets too? Yes. Investments like stocks or real estate are assets. They have the potential to grow in value over time. Cool. But isn't there some risk with investments? True. There's always a risk. Investments can go up or down in value, unlike a stable asset like a house. Ah, got it. So, it's about balancing risks and rewards? Exactly. It's all part of managing your financial portfolio. Speaking of portfolios, how do you diversify assets? Diversifying means spreading your investments across different types, like stocks, bonds, and real estate. It helps manage risk. That sounds smart. And what about emergency funds? Are they assets? Great point. Emergency funds are like a safety net. They're not investments, but they're liquid assets you can quickly access in a pinch. Liquid assets? Assets you can convert to cash easily, like savings accounts or some investments. Ah, gotcha. So, it's not just about having assets, but having the right kinds. Spot on. And understanding the difference between assets and liabilities is the first step. Thanks for breaking it down. It's clearer now. No problem. It's essential to have a solid grasp of these concepts for financial well-being. Definitely. I'll start paying more attention to my assets and liabilities from now on. Lesson 56. Best ways to save money. Hey, have you ever thought about how to save some extra cash? Yeah, I'm always looking for ways to cut costs. What do you have in mind? Well, I read that cooking at home instead of eating out can save a lot of money. True, but groceries can be expensive too. Maybe we should try buying generic brands instead of the expensive ones. Good point. And speaking of groceries, planning meals ahead of time can help avoid impulse buys. Yeah, and it ensures we only buy what we really need. By the way, have you considered using public transport instead of driving? I have, but sometimes it's more convenient to drive. Maybe we can carpool with colleagues or friends to share fuel costs. 
That's a smart idea. I also heard that turning off lights and unplugging electronics when not in use can save on electricity bills. Absolutely. Small changes like using energy-efficient bulbs can make a difference too. What about our mobile plans? We might be paying for more data than we actually need. True. Let's review our usage and find a more suitable plan. And cancelling subscriptions we don't use can free up some funds too. Agreed. And when it comes to clothes, do we really need to buy new ones all the time? No. We can try thrift stores or have clothing swaps with friends. It's sustainable and saves money. Smart thinking. And what about coffee? Those daily cafe visits add up. Making coffee at home and using a reusable cup can save both money and the environment. Nice suggestion. I was also thinking of selling some items we don't need anymore. Decluttering and earning a bit on the side. Great idea. Let's go through our stuff and see what we can sell online. By the way, have you considered buying in bulk? It's usually cheaper in the long run. Yes, and it reduces packaging waste too. We just need to make sure we have enough storage space. True. And when it comes to entertainment, maybe we can have more movie nights at home instead of going to the cinema. That sounds fun and definitely more budget friendly. Also, fixing things instead of buying new ones can save money in the long term. I agree. Learning some basic repair skills can go a long way. And what about insurance? Do we really need all the coverage we have? Let's review our policies and see if there are areas where we can cut back without compromising our needs. And when we do need to buy something, checking for discounts and using coupons can help. Absolutely. Let's become savvy shoppers and make the most of those deals. And hey, have you thought about setting up a budget? Yeah, having a budget can help us track our expenses and ensure we stay on target with our savings goals. Perfect. Let's start implementing these changes and watch our savings grow. Lesson 57, Discussing the Psychology of Money. Hey, have you read The Psychology of Money yet? Yeah, I just finished it. It was really interesting. What's the main lesson you took from it? Well, one big lesson is that it's not about how much you make, but how you manage what you have. Yeah, I heard that too. Can you explain more? Sure. It means that even if you earn a lot, if you spend it all and don't save or invest wisely, you won't be financially secure. That makes sense. What else did you learn? The book talks about the power of compounding. Small, consistent investments can grow over time. So, starting early is important, right? Exactly. Starting early can make a huge difference in the long run. I also read something about the importance of avoiding big losses. Can you explain that? Of course. It's about protecting what you have. If you lose a big chunk of your savings, it's hard to recover. So, risk management is crucial? Yes, it's about balancing risk and reward. Did the book mention anything about our emotions and money? Yes, it did. It talks about how our emotions can lead to impulsive decisions and how we should try to stay calm and rational when it comes to money. That's easier said than done, right? Absolutely. It takes practice, but it's important for financial well-being. What about budgeting and tracking expenses? The book stresses the importance of knowing where your money goes. Budgeting helps you control your spending. Sounds like a good idea. Did the book have any practical tips? Yeah, it suggested automating savings and investments, so you don't even have to think about it. That's convenient. Did it mention anything about investing? Yes, it emphasized the value of long-term investing and diversifying your investments to spread risk. 
so don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right, that's the idea. Spread your investments across different assets. Did you find any stories or examples in the book? Yeah, there are plenty of real life stories that illustrate the principles discussed. That makes it more relatable, I suppose. Definitely. It's easier to understand with practical examples. Did the book offer any advice on dealing with debt? It mentioned that not all debt is bad, like a mortgage for a home. But high interest debt, like credit card debt, should be avoided. Got it. So, prioritize paying off high interest debt. Yes, that's a good strategy for financial stability. Did it talk about setting financial goals? Yes, it encourages setting clear financial goals to stay motivated and focused. Sounds like a great read. I'll have to check it out. You definitely should. It's a book that can change your perspective on money. Thanks for sharing these insights. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It's always good to talk about money and financial wisdom. Lesson 58 How We Got Rich. Hey, have you ever thought about how to make some serious money? Yeah, sure. I'm always looking for ways to boost my income. What about you? Well, I'm thinking of investing in stocks. It seems like a smart move to grow my wealth over time. Stocks, huh? I've heard about that. But isn't it risky? It can be, but with proper research and a long-term strategy, it's manageable. What's your plan? I'm more into starting a small business. Maybe something like an online store. What do you think? That's cool. E-commerce is thriving. Just make sure to find a niche that has demand. Right. I've been reading about affiliate marketing, too. You promote products and get a commission. Seems doable. Absolutely. It's a good way to make money online without a huge initial investment. But you need decent marketing skills. Speaking of skills, I've been considering going back to school for a specialized course. Better qualifications can lead to a higher paying job. Education is key. What field are you thinking of? Maybe digital marketing. It's in demand, and I can apply it to my potential online business. Smart move. Digital skills are becoming increasingly valuable. Another route I'm exploring is real estate. Buy low, sell high, you know? Real estate, huh? Sounds intriguing. How do you get started with that? Well, saving up for a down payment on a property and then renting or selling it for profit. It takes time, but it's a proven method. Interesting. I've heard of people making money through rental properties. I guess location is crucial. Absolutely. Location, location, location. But it's not the only way. Some folks make good money by flipping houses too. Flipping houses? Like buying a rundown place, fixing it up, and selling it for more. Exactly. It requires some renovation skills and a good eye for potential, but the returns can be impressive. Hmm, I need to learn more about that. I also thought about creating a passive income stream, like through royalties or investments. Passive income is the dream, right? Maybe consider writing a book creating an online course, or investing in dividend-paying stocks. Writing a book, huh? I never thought about that. What's your take on it? If you have a passion or expertise in a particular area, writing a book can establish you as an authority and generate royalties over time. Sounds challenging, but rewarding. And I guess the initial effort pays off in the long run. Absolutely. It's all about building something sustainable. By the way, have you considered side hustles? They can bring in extra cash. Side hustles? Like freelancing or gig work? Exactly. Freelancing on platforms like Upwork or Fiverr, or even doing gig work in your free time. It adds up. Not a bad idea. I have some skills that could come in handy for freelancing. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Go for it. It's a flexible way to earn 
especially if you have skills in demand. And remember, saving and budgeting are crucial no matter which path you choose. True. It all comes down to managing money wisely. I've been trying to cut unnecessary expenses and save more. Smart move. That extra money can then be put into your chosen wealth building method. It's a gradual process, but it pays off in the end. Yeah, I'm in it for the long haul. Let's see where our paths to wealth take us. Absolutely. It's a journey and everyone's road is unique. Good luck with your endeavors. Thanks. Same to you. Let's catch up later and share our progress. Definitely. It'll be interesting to see how our strategies play out. Until next time. Lesson 59, Student Life Chit Chat. Hey, how's school going for you? It's okay, but I have so much homework to do. I know what you mean. I've got assignments piling up too. And don't forget those exams coming up. Yeah, they're stressing me out. Speaking of stress, I need to manage my time better. Time management is crucial as a student. Have you tried making a schedule? I've tried, but I often get distracted. I get distracted too. We should help each other stay focused. That's a good idea. How do you stay motivated? Well, I set small goals for myself and reward myself when I achieve them. I'll give that a try. By the way, how's your morning routine? My morning routine is pretty simple. I wake up, shower, and have a quick breakfast. Sounds efficient. I hit the snooze button way too often. That's a common struggle. Maybe set a louder alarm? I should. Are you involved in any extracurricular activities? Yes, I joined the debate club and it's been fun. I've been thinking about joining something too. Any recommendations? Maybe you could try the art club or a sports team. I like the sound of the art club. How about meals on campus? I mostly eat in the cafeteria. It's convenient, but not always the tastiest. Yeah, cafeteria food can be hit or miss. Do you cook at home sometimes? Sometimes, when I have the time. It's nice to have a home-cooked meal. I wish I could cook. I survive on microwave meals. Cooking is a useful skill. You should give it a shot sometime. I will. Thanks for the encouragement. How do you commute to school? I take the bus. It's a bit crowded, but it's affordable. I walk to school. It's good exercise, but not so fun in bad weather. I can imagine. So, what's your favorite subject? I really enjoy history. The teacher makes it interesting. History is fascinating. I prefer science, though. Science can be confusing to me sometimes. How about study groups? I find study groups helpful. We can explain things to each other. I've never tried one. Maybe I should give it a go. It's worth a shot. What's your least favorite part of being a student? Exams. I hate the pressure of taking tests. I understand. For me, it's early morning classes. I'm not a morning person. Neither am I. Late classes are more my speed. Do you have any upcoming projects? I have a group project due next week. It's a bit stressful. Group projects can be challenging, but they teach you teamwork. True, but coordinating schedules is a nightmare. I know what you mean. Are you planning to go to college after high school? I'm considering it, but I'm not entirely sure yet. How about you? I definitely want to go to college, but I'm still deciding on my major. That's a big decision. Any ideas so far? I'm leaning toward engineering or computer science. Those sound like great choices. I'm still exploring my options. It's okay to take your time. What do you like to do in your free time? I like reading, especially novels and manga. How about you? I enjoy playing video games and hiking when I have the chance. Hiking sounds fun. I should try that sometime. Definitely. It's a great way to relax. Are you into any sports? 
I'm not very athletic, but I like watching soccer matches. Soccer is a popular sport. I play basketball with friends occasionally. That's cool. I wish I were better at sports. It's all about practice. Don't be too hard on yourself. Do you have any pets? Yes, I have a dog. He's a handful, but I love him. Dogs make great companions. I have a cat, and she's very independent. Cats are more low maintenance, I hear. How do you deal with stress? I meditate and take short breaks to clear my mind. I should try meditation. I usually just binge watch shows. Relaxing with TV shows is good too. Whatever works for you. Thanks. How about socializing? Do you have a lot of friends? I have a few close friends and some acquaintances. I'm more of an introvert. I have a small circle of friends. Quality over quantity, right? Do you like attending school events? Some events are fun, like school dances. Do you go to them? I go to some, especially if my friends are going. They can be enjoyable. I'll consider going to more. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. You too. Let's catch up again soon. Definitely. Have a great day. Lesson sixty. Explore the world with us. Hey, have you ever thought about going on a trip somewhere? Yeah, I've been thinking about it. Where would you like to go? Well, I was considering a beach destination. What do you think? Sounds good. I like the idea of relaxing by the sea. Which beach are you thinking about? Maybe somewhere in Spain. I've heard the beaches there are beautiful. Spain sounds nice. I've never been there. What do people usually do there? Well, they enjoy the sun, swim, and indulge in delicious food. It's a great cultural experience. That sounds amazing. I'm in. When were you thinking of going? I was thinking maybe next summer. What about you? Summer works for me. I could use a break by then. How long are you thinking of staying? Maybe a week. Enough time to explore and unwind. What activities would you like to do? I'd love to try some local dishes and maybe visit historical sites. Any specific places you want to see? Barcelona is on my list. The architecture there is stunning. What about you? I've heard about Seville. The culture and festivals seem interesting. Let's do it. Great. We should start planning soon. Do you prefer booking a package or planning everything separately? I think a package would be more convenient. Takes off the planning stress. What do you think? Agreed. Plus, it might be more cost-effective. Have you ever booked a package deal before? No, this would be my first time. How about you? I've done it a couple of times. It's hassle-free, and you often get good deals. Where should we stay? Maybe a hotel close to the beach. It's convenient for both relaxation and exploration. Good idea. I'll look into some options. What's your budget like for the trip? I'm thinking of something mid-range, not too fancy, but still comfortable. What about you? Same here. Let's make sure it's affordable and enjoyable. Have you started saving up for the trip? Yeah, I've started putting some money aside. It's good to plan ahead. How about you? Definitely. I've got a travel fund going. It makes things less stressful. What about transportation? I was thinking of flying. It's quicker, although it can be a bit pricier. Agreed. It saves time, and we can use the extra time for sightseeing. Do you have any preferences for airlines? Not really. I usually go for whatever is within my budget. How about you? Same here. As long as it's reliable, I'm good. Do you have any concerns about the trip? Not really. Just the usual stuff like language barriers. Do many people in Spain speak English? Yeah, especially in touristy areas. But it wouldn't hurt to learn some basic Spanish phrases. Want to give it a shot? Sure. Why not? It could be fun. 
Let's start with hola and gracias. What do you think? Perfect. We'll be Spanish pros by the time we get there. Anything else you want to plan in advance? Maybe some activities or tours. I heard there are cool boat tours in Spain. What do you think? Sounds like a plan. I'll check out some options and get back to you. This trip is going to be fantastic. Absolutely. I can't wait to experience Spain with you. It's going to be a memorable adventure. Lesson 61, Tips to Improve Your Grammar Hey, I've been struggling with English grammar lately. Oh, I can help you with that. What's been giving you trouble? Well, I have a hard time with verb tenses. They always confuse me. I see. It's essential to understand verb tenses. Have you tried watching English movies or TV shows? Yes, I have. But sometimes I still get mixed up between past, present, and future tenses. Don't worry, that's common. Try using English grammar exercises online. They can be helpful. All right, I'll give that a shot. How about articles like a and an or they? They also trip me up. Articles can be tricky. You should practice by reading more and paying attention to how they're used in context. Makes sense. And what about prepositions? I always use them incorrectly. Prepositions can be challenging, but practice is key. Try learning common prepositions and their usage in different situations. That's a good idea. I should also work on my vocabulary. Any tips for expanding it? Definitely. Try reading books and articles in English. Whenever you encounter a new word, make a note of it and look up its meaning. Great advice. What about pronunciation? My accent is quite strong. To improve pronunciation, practice speaking with native speakers or use language learning apps that focus on pronunciation. Thanks for all these tips. I hope I can become better at English soon. You're welcome. Remember, consistent practice is the key to success. Don't be too hard on yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. I'll keep that in mind. By the way, do you know any good online courses for grammar? Yes, there are many online courses. Check out platforms like Duolingo, Coursera, or Khan Academy for grammar lessons. I'll check those out. How long do you think it will take for me to see significant improvement? It varies from person to person, but with regular practice and dedication, you'll notice progress within a few months. That's encouraging to hear. I'll give it my best shot. I'm sure you will do great. Remember, learning a new language is a journey, and every step counts. Thanks for your support. I appreciate it. You're welcome. If you have any more questions or need help, feel free to ask anytime. I will. Thanks again, and wish me luck. Good luck, and keep up the hard work. You'll get there. Lesson 62. Stories of Inspiring People Hey, have you ever thought about who inspires you the most? Yeah, definitely. I admire my grandma a lot. She's so strong. Really? What makes her so inspiring? Well, she grew up in tough times, but she always stayed positive. She taught me to never give up. That's amazing. My role model is Nelson Mandela. He fought for equality and justice. Mandela, huh? He sounds like a great leader. What qualities do you admire in him? He had this incredible ability to forgive and promote unity, even after facing so much injustice. It's truly inspiring. Wow, forgiveness is a powerful trait. My grandma is also big on kindness. Kindness goes a long way. Mandela believed in reconciliation too. Did your grandma face challenging times? Yeah, she did. Life wasn't easy, but she always found a way to help others. She's like my personal hero. It's wonderful how our personal heroes shape who we are. Mandela's perseverance in the face of adversity is what I find most inspiring. 
Perseverance is key for sure. My grandma used to say, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Wise words. Mandela's life motto was somewhat similar. It always seems impossible until it's done. True. They both believed in facing challenges head on. Did Mandela's words influence your life? Absolutely. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, I remember Mandela's words, and it gives me strength. How about your grandma's advice? Her words guide me too. Whenever I face difficulties, I think of her saying, stay strong and tomorrow will be better. It's beautiful how our inspiring figures leave lasting impressions. Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Education is indeed powerful. My grandma, despite limited resources, always emphasized its importance. Sounds like she's a remarkable woman. Mandela believed in education for change as well. Did your grandma's values influence your choices? Absolutely. She taught me to be kind, work hard, and never underestimate the power of a good education. Those are valuable lessons. Mandela's resilience and commitment to justice made me passionate about social change. It's amazing how our heroes inspire us to make a difference. My grandma's kindness inspires me to spread positivity. Positivity is contagious. Mandela's legacy also encourages me to contribute positively to society. What specific acts of kindness do you associate with your grandma? She used to help the neighbors, cook for them when they were sick, and always offered a listening ear. Small acts, but they meant a lot. Small gestures can have a big impact. Mandela's life was full of sacrifices for the greater good. Have you ever applied your grandma's values in your life? Definitely. I try to help others whenever I can and be there for people in need. It's my way of honoring her teachings. That's wonderful. Mandela once said, What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others. Those are powerful words. Your inspiring person had such a profound impact on the world. Absolutely. Their legacies live on through the positive changes they inspired in others. It's incredible how our heroes, despite facing challenges, chose to make the world a better place. Indeed, they remind us that even in difficult times, we have the power to bring about positive change. I'm grateful for the lessons my grandma taught me. She's my everyday inspiration. And Mandela, for me, is a constant reminder of the strength that comes from standing up for what's right. It's nice talking about our inspiring people. They shape us in ways we may not even realize. True. They leave an indelible mark on our hearts and minds. Let's continue to be inspired by their examples. Agreed. It's a beautiful way to keep their legacies alive. Lesson 63, Best Way to Invest Money Hey, have you ever thought about investing our savings? Yeah, I'm considering it, but I'm not sure where to start. Well, you could look into stocks or bonds. They're common options. Stocks? Sounds a bit risky. What about something safer? True, stocks can be volatile. How about a savings account? It's low risk. But the returns are so low. Isn't there a middle ground? Have you thought about mutual funds? They offer a balance between risk and return. Mutual funds? How do they work? Basically, they pool money from multiple investors to invest in a diversified portfolio. Diversified portfolio? That sounds complicated. It just means spreading your investments across different assets to reduce risk. Got it. What about real estate? That's a thing, right? Absolutely. Real estate can be a good long-term investment. Property values tend to appreciate. But it requires a lot of money up front, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Maybe we could start with a real estate investment trust, REIT, instead. 
REIT? Never heard of it. It's like investing in real estate, but you buy shares in a company that owns and manages properties. That sounds more manageable. How about cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency is volatile. It's like a roller coaster. You can gain big, but you can also lose big. Risky, huh? Maybe I'll pass on that one. What about gold? Gold is a traditional safe haven asset. It tends to hold its value during economic uncertainties. Sounds solid. How do we invest in gold? You can buy physical gold, like coins or bars, or invest in gold exchange traded funds, ETFs. ETFs? Are they complicated? Not really. ETFs are like baskets of different assets, and you can buy shares just like stocks. Interesting. What's your take on a 401k? It's a retirement savings plan, usually sponsored by employers. They often match your contributions. Free money? I'm in. How about bonds? I've heard they're stable. Bonds are loans you give to companies or governments. They're less risky than stocks. But do they pay well? Not as much as stocks, but they provide a steady income stream through interest payments. I see. So, what's your recommendation for us? I'd suggest a diversified approach. Maybe a mix of stocks, bonds and a savings account for emergencies. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Lesson 64. The Pros and Cons of Artificial Intelligence Hey, have you ever thought about how AI is changing our lives? Yeah, it's everywhere nowadays. I think it makes things easier, but also a bit complicated. True. The good thing is that AI can save time. For example, it helps in automating tasks. That's a positive point. But what about privacy? I feel like AI sometimes invades our personal space. You're right. Privacy is a concern. But think about healthcare. AI can analyze medical data quickly leading to faster diagnoses. Hmm, true. But I worry about job loss. Automation might replace some jobs, don't you think? I get your point. However, AI can create new job opportunities too. It's not all bad. Fair enough. I've heard about AI in education. It personalizes learning, but is it really effective? Well, it tailors learning experiences to individual needs but it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. I guess so. By the way, does AI ever scare you? Like, what if it becomes too smart? The classic fear of machines taking over. I think as long as we control it, it's fine. Right. And what about the environmental impact? AI requires a lot of energy. Yeah, that's a downside. But researchers are working on making AI more energy efficient. Hmm, good to know. But let's talk about everyday life. AI assistants can be helpful, but are they trustworthy? They're designed to be, but errors happen. It's essential to double-check the information they provide. Got it. Switching gears, AI and art, do you think it can truly be creative? It can generate art, but true creativity involves emotions. I don't think AI can replicate that. Fair point. Speaking of emotions, do you think AI can understand human feelings? It's getting better, like with chatbots, but true emotional understanding is a complex task for AI. Yeah, sometimes I doubt if AI can really comprehend the depth of human emotions. Agreed. On a positive note, AI can help with language translation. It breaks down language barriers. Absolutely. It's amazing how it can make communication smoother between people who speak different languages. And in agriculture, AI optimizes crop yields. It's a game changer for farmers. That's fantastic. But what about the cost? Implementing AI technology can be expensive. True, the initial investment is high, but the long-term benefits often outweigh the costs. Hmm, I see your point. Let's talk about security now. Can we trust AI to keep our data safe? Security is a concern, 
but advancements are being made to enhance AI systems' robustness against cyber threats. Good to know. I just worry about the increasing dependence on AI. What if it fails? It's a valid concern. That's why we need backup plans and human oversight to ensure reliability. Right. Humans should always have the final say. But hey, self-driving cars, are they really safe? They're designed with safety in mind, but there are still challenges. Human intervention is crucial in certain situations. I guess trusting a machine to drive is a big leap for me. And what about biases in AI? I heard they can be unfair. Yes, biases can exist in AI systems, often reflecting human biases. It's a challenge that developers are working to address. It's good to know they're aware of it. By the way, do you think AI will replace human relationships? No way. AI can assist, but human connections are irreplaceable. Technology should enhance, not replace, our relationships. True, there's something special about human connections. So, overall, do you see AI as a friend or a foe? I'd say a friend, but we need to be cautious. Like any tool, it depends on how we use it. Yeah, balance is key. Thanks for this chat. It's given me a lot to think about regarding AI. Anytime. It's a complex topic, but discussing it helps us understand its impact better. Lesson 65, Exploring the World of Nanotechnology. Hey, have you heard about nanotechnology? Yeah, I think it's about really tiny stuff, right? Exactly. It's all about manipulating things at the molecular level. Scientists are doing amazing things with it. Sounds cool. What kind of things are they working on? Well, there's talk of using nanotech in medicine, like tiny robots that can target and treat diseases. No way. That sounds like science fiction. It's not. They're also looking at improving materials, making them stronger and lighter. Imagine super durable, yet lightweight materials. That would be a game changer for sure. But isn't there a downside to messing with things at such a tiny level? Good point. There are concerns about the environmental impact and potential risks. Scientists are working on addressing those issues too. It's a tricky balance, huh? But what about everyday life? How will nanotech affect us? Well, in the future, we might have self-cleaning clothes and surfaces thanks to nano-coatings. Also, energy-efficient devices and faster computers are on the horizon. Nice. I could use a self-cleaning kitchen. Right? And imagine having personalized medicine tailored to your specific genetic makeup using nanotech. That's a bit mind-blowing. Do you think it's all going to happen soon? Some things are already in the works, but widespread use might take a bit more time. There are still challenges to overcome. True. What about privacy concerns? With all this advanced tech, will our privacy be at risk? That's a valid point. As technology advances, there will be new ethical questions to address. It's essential to find a balance between progress and protecting our privacy. Yeah, striking that balance is key. Do you think everyone will benefit equally from nanotechnology? Ideally, yes. But there are concerns about accessibility and affordability. It's crucial to ensure that the benefits of nanotech are accessible to all. Fair point. I hope it doesn't create a bigger gap between the haves and the have-nots. Agreed. The ethical and social aspects need as much attention as the technological ones. Changing gears a bit, but do you think nanotech will impact the job market? Definitely. As new technologies emerge, some jobs may become obsolete, but there will also be new opportunities in nanotech-related fields. Adaptability will be key. So, learning about nanotech might be a good idea for the future job market. Absolutely. It's always a good idea to stay ahead and be prepared for the changes. I'm curious. 
What do you think the next big breakthrough in nanotech will be? It's hard to predict, but I've heard researchers are working on nanobots for targeted drug delivery. Imagine treating diseases with incredible precision. That sounds promising. I hope they make progress soon. Me too. It's fascinating to think about how much our world could change with these advancements. Yeah, it's exciting and a bit overwhelming at the same time. But I guess that's progress for you. Absolutely. Embracing the future while being mindful of the potential challenges is the way forward. Well said. Let's hope the future of nanotech brings more good than harm. Agreed. It's all about responsible innovation. Lesson 66, talking about the family trip. Hey sis, have you heard about the family trip? Yeah, I heard. Where are we going? We're going to the mountains. Wow, that sounds exciting. When are we leaving? Dad said we're leaving on Saturday morning. Great. What should I pack? Don't forget warm clothes and hiking shoes. Okay, I'll make a list. Mom wants us to bring some snacks, too. I'll remember that. How long will the trip be? Dad said it was just a weekend trip. Perfect. I won't miss school. We can play games during the car ride. Yeah, that'll be fun. Can we bring my favorite board game? Sure. Let's not forget it. Do we need to bring our sleeping bags? Nope. Dad booked a cabin for us. Awesome. Will there be a campfire? I think so. And we can roast marshmallows. Yum. I love marshmallows. Me too, sis. And there's a lake nearby. Can we go swimming? Yeah, but remember to bring your swimsuit. Got it. What else should we do there? We can go on nature hikes and explore. I hope we see some cool animals. Maybe we'll spot some birds. I'll bring my binoculars just in case. Good idea. What's your favorite thing about trips? I love spending time with my family. Me too, sis. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to take lots of photos. Mom said she'll bring a camera too. We'll have so many memories to cherish. Yeah, family trips are the best. And this one will be unforgettable. Let's make sure to help with packing. Of course, teamwork. Don't forget your toothbrush. I won't, bro. Thanks for reminding me. We'll have a blast together. I agree. It's going to be amazing. Let's make this trip one to remember. Definitely, I can't wait. Lesson 67, The Future of AI Technology. Hey, have you heard about AI technology? Yeah, I've heard about it. It's that computer stuff, right? Yep, that's right. AI stands for artificial intelligence. Artificial what now? Intelligence, like being smart, AI makes computers smart. Oh, so computers can think like us? Well, sort of. They can learn and make decisions. That sounds cool. What's going to happen in the future with AI? AI will do many things, like helping doctors with diagnoses. That's good. Will AI take our jobs, though? It might, but it could also create new jobs. Hmm, I hope so. Is AI everywhere now? Not everywhere, but it's in self-driving cars and virtual assistants. Virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa? Exactly. They use AI to answer questions. I see. Will AI become smarter than humans? Some experts think so, but it's a long way off. That's a relief. What do you think AI will be like in 10 years? It'll be better at tasks like translation and maybe even cooking. Wow, that's amazing. What about robots? 
AI will make robots do tasks like cleaning and helping the elderly. Cool. But I hope they're friendly. They should be. People will program them that way. Phew, I feel better about the future of AI now. Yeah, it's exciting and a bit scary, but we'll see. Let's hope it makes life better for us. That's the idea. Lesson 68, The Richest Man in Babylon Life Lessons. Hey, have you ever read The Richest Man in Babylon? Yeah, I have. It's a classic book on money management. What did you think of it? I found it really interesting. One lesson that stood out to me was the importance of saving money. Oh, definitely. The book talks about paying yourself first, right? Yes, exactly. It suggests saving at least 10% of your income before you spend anything else. That's a great tip. It's all about building a financial safety net. Another lesson I liked was the concept of making your money work for you. Right? They mentioned investing wisely to grow your wealth. It made me realize that I should start investing too. Investing can be a bit intimidating, but the book encourages you to seek advice from experts, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it emphasizes the power of compounding and how small investments can grow over time. Speaking of time, the book also stresses the importance of not procrastinating when it comes to financial matters. Absolutely. It says that delaying financial decisions can cost you in the long run. It's better to take action now. Another lesson I took from it was the need to control your expenses. Yes, tracking your spending and living within your means is crucial to achieving financial success. And it's not about depriving yourself, but rather prioritizing your spending. That's right. The book suggests differentiating between your needs and wants. One lesson I found interesting was the story of the purse with two compartments. Oh yes, the book talks about allocating a portion of your income for investments and another for daily expenses, like the two compartments of a purse. Exactly. It's a simple but effective way to manage your money. The book also emphasizes the value of seeking advice from experienced people. True. It's important to learn from those who have already achieved financial success and to avoid taking financial advice from people who are not financially successful themselves. That's a crucial point. Surrounding yourself with the right mentors can make a big difference. Another lesson I liked was the story of Arkad, the richest man in Babylon, and how he started with nothing. Yes, it shows that anyone can improve their financial situation with the right knowledge and discipline. The book is full of timeless wisdom. I'm definitely going to apply these lessons in my life. That's great to hear. It's a book that can truly change your financial perspective. Absolutely. So are you already putting some of these lessons into practice? Yes, I've started saving more and looking into investment opportunities. It's a process, but I'm committed. That's awesome. Let's support each other on this journey to financial success. Definitely, having an accountability partner can be really helpful. We can both become the richest men in our own Babylons. You're right. Here's to our financial success and a secure future. Cheers to that. Lesson 69, How to Start Investing in Stocks. Hey, have you ever thought about investing in stocks? Yeah, I'm curious, but I don't know where to start. Any ideas? Well, you can begin by researching some reliable companies. Look for those with a good track record. Where do I find that information? There are many websites and apps for beginners. Try using one of those to check a company's financial health. Sounds good. How much money should I invest initially? Start small, maybe with a hundred bucks or so. 
Diversify your investments to reduce risk. Got it. Should I go for long term or short term investments? For beginners, long term is less risky. It gives your investments time to grow despite short term market fluctuations. Any specific sectors I should focus on? Consider investing in sectors you understand, like tech or healthcare, for instance. And how often should I check my investments? Don't obsess over it. Once a month is fine, unless there's big news affecting the market. Should I hire a financial advisor? Not necessary at this stage. Learn the basics yourself. There are plenty of resources online. What about dividends? Should I aim for stocks that pay them? Dividends can be a good source of income, but not all stocks pay them. It depends on your investment goals. I heard about ETFs. Are they a good starting point? Absolutely. Exchange traded funds, ETFs, offer diversification and are beginner friendly. How about risk management? Set a budget you can afford to lose and don't invest money you might need in the short term. Is it a good idea to follow the news closely? Stay informed, but don't let daily news sway your decisions. Think long term. What if the market crashes? Don't panic. Markets go up and down. Stay calm and consider it a buying opportunity. What's the deal with stock market indices? They represent the overall market performance. SP 500 is a common one to track. How do I buy stocks? Open a brokerage account. There are many online platforms. Look for one with low fees. Should I invest in international stocks too? It can diversify your portfolio, but start with domestic stocks until you're more experienced. Are there any books you recommend? The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham is a classic. It's a bit advanced, but valuable. I'm worried about taxes. Any tips? Consult a tax professional to understand the implications. It's crucial to stay compliant. How do I know when to sell a stock? Have a clear strategy. Sell if your investment goals are met or if there are fundamental changes in the company. Should I use technical analysis? It's optional. Focus on understanding the company's fundamentals first. Can I start investing with a small salary? Absolutely. It's about consistency. Even small amounts can grow over time. How do emotions affect investing? Emotions can lead to impulsive decisions. Stay rational and stick to your plan. Is it a good idea to borrow money to invest? No, it's risky. Only invest what you can afford to lose. What if I make a loss? It happens. Learn from it. It's part of the investment journey. How can I stay motivated during market downturns? Remember, downturns are temporary. Keep your long term goals in mind. Any success stories to inspire me? Many people have built wealth through disciplined investing. Patience is key. Thanks for the advice. I'll start researching tonight. Great. Take it step by step, and you'll become a confident investor in no time. I appreciate your help. Let's do this. Lesson 70 Our Favorite YouTube Channels. Hey, have you seen that cool YouTube channel I told you about? Yeah, it's awesome. I love how they explain things in a simple way. Right? The guy who hosts it is really good at breaking down complex topics. Absolutely. I think that's why it's so popular. It's easy for everyone to understand. What's your favorite video so far? Hmm, probably the one about science experiments at home. It was super interesting. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. Is it suitable for beginners? Totally. They use everyday items, and it's explained step by step. Nice. I'm looking for more beginner friendly content. 
you should check out their playlist for beginners. It covers a wide range of topics. Great suggestion. I'll definitely do that. Do they upload regularly? Yeah, every week. I always look forward to their new videos. That consistency is impressive. It must take a lot of effort to create quality content regularly. Definitely, but it keeps their audience engaged. What's your favorite part about the channel? I like how interactive it is. They often ask viewers for suggestions on what topics to cover next. True, it feels like they value their audience's input, makes it more engaging. Have you subscribed to their channel? Of course. I don't want to miss any of their updates. Same here. I also turned on notifications so I can be the first to watch new videos. Smart move. I should do that too. What other channels do you follow? Well, besides this one, I like channels that focus on travel and food. How about you? Oh, I'm into DIY and home improvement channels. I find them really inspiring. Nice. We have different tastes, but that's what makes YouTube so diverse. Absolutely. There's something for everyone. Do you ever leave comments on their videos? Yeah, I've commented a few times. It's cool when they respond or heart your comment. It's like a small community within the channel. I love reading other people's comments, too. It's like we're all connected through our shared interests. YouTube is more than just videos. Totally agree. It's a platform for learning and connecting with like-minded people. Do you watch their live streams? Sometimes, but not regularly. I find it hard to catch them live because of the time difference. Yeah, time zones can be tricky. They usually upload the streams later, though. That's true. I'll have to catch up on those. Have you tried any of the DIY projects they suggested? Not yet, but I have a few bookmarked. I'm planning to try one this weekend. That sounds like a fun weekend plan. Let me know how it goes. Will do. What about you? Any DIY projects on your list? I actually tried one last week, the home organization tips. It was challenging, but worth it. Nice. I need to organize my space too. Maybe I'll try that one next. It's rewarding when you see the results. Plus, it makes your living space more enjoyable. Definitely need to give it a shot then. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. That's what friends are for sharing cool stuff. Lesson 71, Making Sense of Money Matters. Hey, have you thought about our budget plan recently? Yeah, I have. I think it's essential to set a budget and stick to it. Absolutely. I'm a bit concerned about our spending lately. Do you think we can save more money? I believe so. We should begin by tracking our expenses. That's a good idea. How about creating a budget spreadsheet? Great suggestion. We can list our income and categorize our spending. Let's start with the basics like rent, utilities, and groceries. Agreed. And don't forget about transportation costs like gas and public transportation. Right. Those can add up quickly. What about leisure activities and dining out? We should limit those and set a specific monthly allowance for them. Makes sense. How about saving for emergencies? We must allocate a portion of our income to an emergency fund. What about saving for future goals like a vacation? We can create a separate savings account for that and contribute regularly. Good idea. So, what's our total monthly income? Let's calculate that, including both our salaries. And what about fixed expenses, rent, utilities, and so on? We should list them and calculate the total. Now, what's left is our discretionary income, right? Yes, that's the amount we can allocate to different categories. How much should we save for emergencies? 
A good rule of thumb is to save at least 10% of our income. All right, that sounds reasonable. What about vacation savings? Maybe 5% of our income for now. And for leisure and dining out? We should limit it to 15% of our income. That's fair. And what about savings for retirement? We can consider setting aside 10% for our retirement fund. So, after accounting for all these, what's left for miscellaneous expenses? Maybe 10% for miscellaneous expenses, just to be flexible. It all adds up to 100%, right? Yes, it does. We've allocated every part of our income. That's good. We should stick to this plan and monitor our spending. Agreed. We can review it monthly to see if any adjustments are needed. And we should avoid unnecessary impulse purchases, right? Absolutely. Impulse buying can disrupt our budget. So, when should we start implementing this budget plan? Let's start next month to give us time to prepare. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for helping me with this budget. It's much clearer now. You're welcome. We're in this together, and we'll make it work. I appreciate your support. It's essential for our financial stability. No problem. Let's stick to the plan and achieve our financial goals. I'm confident we can do it. We have a solid budget plan now. I believe in us too. Let's work together to reach our financial objectives. Thanks for your confidence. Let's make it happen. Lesson 72. The Importance of Financial Education Hey, have you ever thought about the importance of financial education? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's helpful to know how to manage money. True, but do you think schools should teach it as a regular subject? I think it could be useful. Many people struggle with finances. Right. Understanding budgets and saving is crucial. Budgeting? That sounds complicated. It's not that bad. It's just planning how to spend your money. I guess I should learn that. I often spend too much. Financial education would teach you how to avoid overspending. But what about investing? Is that part of it? Definitely. Investing is how you grow your money over time. I'm scared of losing money if I invest. That's why you need to learn the basics first. So, where can I get this financial education? You can start by reading books or taking online courses. Books? Can you recommend any? The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey is great for beginners. Thanks, I'll check that out. What about loans and credit cards? Financial education covers that too. It's crucial to understand interest rates. Interest rates? I've heard that term, but I'm not sure what it means. It's the extra money you pay when you borrow money. Okay, I get it now. It's like a fee for borrowing. Exactly. High interest rates can lead to debt. Debt sounds scary. How do I avoid it? By learning to manage your finances wisely. I suppose it's all about making smart choices. You got it. And learning about compound interest can help too. Compound interest? That's another term I'm not familiar with. It's when your interest earns interest, helping your savings grow faster. I see. So, financial education would teach me all these terms. Yes, and more. It's about building a solid financial foundation. Sounds like something everyone should learn. Absolutely. It can make a huge difference in your life. I think I'll start my financial education journey soon. That's a great idea. It's never too late to begin. Thanks for the advice. I appreciate it. No problem. Happy to help. Let's both work towards financial literacy. Agreed.
It's time to take control of our finances. Lesson 73, Social Media Pros and Cons. Hey, have you ever thought about the good things social media brings? Yeah, I mean, it's nice to connect with friends and family easily. True, and you can share photos and updates instantly. But, you know, there are downsides too, like privacy concerns and stuff. Yeah, that's a big issue. It feels like everyone knows everything about you. And the time we spend on it, it's so addictive, you lose track. Absolutely. Sometimes I wish I could just unplug and take a break. But on the bright side, it's a great way to find interesting events and news. Yeah, I've discovered so many cool things through social media. On the other hand, there's also misinformation spreading like wildfire. True, it's hard to know what's real and what's not sometimes. And the pressure to always post something exciting or perfect, it's stressful. I totally get that. It's like we're all trying to show off our best selves. But hey, it's a fantastic tool for networking and career opportunities. Oh, definitely. I've seen job offers and professional events on there. Yet, there's also cyberbullying, which is really concerning. Yeah, it's terrible how people can hide behind a screen and be mean. Still, social media helps in staying connected, especially in long-distance friendships. That's true. I can keep up with my friends from different countries. But sometimes, it feels like we're more focused on our online life than the real one. Agreed? It's like we're living for the likes and comments. And the constant notifications. It's hard to concentrate sometimes. Yeah, it's like a never-ending stream of distractions. Nevertheless, social media is a powerful tool for activism and raising awareness. Definitely. It gives a voice to those who might not be heard otherwise. On the downside, it also amplifies negativity and hate speech. It's sad how some people use it to spread hate instead of love. But think about the good times it helps us remember through old photos and posts. Yeah, the memories. It's like a digital scrapbook of our lives. Still, the fear of missing out, FOMO, is real and can be overwhelming. I know what you mean. Seeing everyone's highlight reel can be tough. Yet, it's a great platform for expressing creativity through art and writing. True. Many talented people showcase their work there. But it also contributes to a culture of comparison and low self-esteem. Yeah, constantly comparing ourselves to others isn't healthy. Nevertheless, social media can be a powerful educational tool. Totally. I've learned a lot from articles and videos shared there. On the flip side, it can also be a huge time waster if we're not careful. Oh, for sure. I've lost count of the hours spent mindlessly scrolling. So, what do you think? Is the impact of social media more positive or negative? It's a tough call. There are good and bad aspects, but it depends on how we use it. Agreed. Like any tool, it's about finding a balance and using it responsibly. Absolutely. It's all about being mindful of our online presence and the impact it has. Well, it was good chatting about this. Let's catch up in person sometime, away from screens. Definitely. It's time for a social media detox, at least for a little while. Lesson 74, Daily Expenses Chat. Hey, how's it going? Have you been keeping track of your expenses lately? Yeah, I've been trying to budget more. It's tough to stick to it, though. Tell me about it. I'm always worried about overspending. Me too. I need to cut back on unnecessary costs. What are your biggest expenses? Rent takes up a huge chunk of my budget. How about you? I'd say groceries and utilities are my main expenses. I've been thinking of finding a cheaper place to live. That might help. I'm trying to cook at home more to save on food expenses. 
Smart move. Eating out can really drain your wallet. Absolutely. Do you use any apps to track spending? Yeah, I use a budgeting app. It helps me see where my money's going. I should give that a try. How about entertainment expenses? I try to limit outings. Movies and dining out can add up fast. I've been exploring free or low-cost activities instead. That's a good idea. Do you set a daily spending limit? I try to, but unexpected expenses often throw me off track. I get it. Sometimes emergencies can't be avoided. Exactly. I'm looking into building an emergency fund. That's a wise move. It's essential to have a financial safety net. Are you into online shopping? I used to be, but I'm trying to avoid unnecessary purchases. It's hard to resist sometimes, isn't it? Definitely. I try to think twice before hitting that buy button. How do you handle transportation expenses? I mostly use public transport to save on fuel and parking costs. I should consider that too. Do you plan your expenses for the month? Yes, I outline a rough budget at the beginning of each month. I should start doing that. Do you have any specific saving goals? I'm saving up for a vacation next year. What about you? I'm aiming to save for further education. That's great. It's good to have clear saving objectives. How do you cut down on miscellaneous expenses? I try to avoid impulse buys and stick to my shopping list. I need to work on that. How about clothing expenses? I try to buy during sales or secondhand when possible. That's smart. I tend to overspend on clothing. It's easy to do. Have you considered a no-spend challenge? That's an interesting idea. I might give it a shot. It can be a fun way to test your willpower. Agreed. I'm determined to be more mindful about spending. Same here. Being aware of our expenses is key to financial stability. It's a continuous learning process, isn't it? Absolutely. Small changes can lead to big savings in the long run. I'm glad we had this talk. It's motivating me to be more disciplined. Likewise, it's good to have a conversation about managing expenses. We can keep each other accountable on our financial goals. Definitely. Let's check in on our progress in a few weeks. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for the chat. Anytime. We've got this. Lesson 75, Christmas Plans Chat. Hey, are you ready for Christmas this year? Yeah, I've got a few plans in mind. How about you? Well, I'm thinking of hosting a small gathering at my place. Want to join? That sounds nice. What's on the menu? I'm planning a traditional Christmas dinner with turkey and all the trimmings. Great. I'll bring some desserts. By the way, when are you putting up your Christmas tree? I was thinking of doing it this weekend. How about you? I already decorated mine. It's looking quite festive. Nice. I still need to buy some presents. Any suggestions? You can never go wrong with some cozy winter socks or a good book. Good ideas. I'll add them to my shopping list. Have you started your Christmas shopping? Yeah. I've got most of it done. Just a few more things to pick up. Lucky you. I always end up doing last-minute shopping. It can get hectic, but the discounts are worth it. True. Speaking of discounts, are you planning to hit the post-Christmas sales? Definitely. It's the perfect time to grab some bargains. I'm looking forward to the holiday break. Any special plans? I'm thinking of taking a short trip to the mountains. How about you? I'll probably stay in town and enjoy some quiet time at home. That sounds relaxing. Do you have any favorite Christmas movies you plan to watch? I love watching Home Alone and It's a Wonderful Life. How about you? 
Elf is always a must-watch for me. And A Christmas Carol. Classic choices. Do you have any Christmas traditions you follow every year? I always bake Christmas cookies with my family. It's a tradition we've had for years. That sounds wonderful. Maybe I'll start a new tradition this year. It's never too late to begin a new tradition. What about attending a Christmas market? Oh, that's a great idea. I heard there's a charming one downtown. We could go together. It'll be fun. Count me in. Do you usually send out Christmas cards? Yes, I like to send cards to friends and family. It adds a personal touch. I think I'll do that too this year. It's been a while since I sent out cards. It's a nice way to spread holiday cheer. Are you planning to volunteer during the Christmas season? I haven't thought about it, but it's a good idea. Any suggestions for where to volunteer? You could check with local charities or community centers. They often need extra help during the holidays. I'll look into that. It would be nice to give back to the community. Absolutely. Christmas is a time for spreading joy and kindness. Speaking of which, have you thought about what you want for Christmas this year? I haven't really thought about it. I'm more excited about spending time with loved ones. That's true. The best gift is being with family and friends. Definitely. By the way, have you ever tried making your own Christmas decorations? I haven't, but it sounds like a fun DIY project. Any easy ideas? You can make simple ornaments with pine cones and ribbon. It's a budget-friendly option. I'll give it a try. DIY decorations have a special charm. They do. It adds a personal touch to your Christmas decor. What about holiday music? Any favorites? I love listening to classic Christmas carols. They bring back fond memories. Same here. The festive tunes really set the holiday mood. Have you ever attended a Christmas carol concert? Yes, I try to go to one every year. The atmosphere is magical. I should check if there's one happening nearby. It would be a nice experience. Definitely. It's a great way to enjoy the holiday spirit. Oh, and don't forget to wear your ugly Christmas sweater. How could I forget? It's a must for the holiday season. I've got mine ready. The tackier, the better. Agreed. It's all part of the festive fun. Hey, do you have any travel plans for Christmas? Not this year. I'm keeping it low-key and spending time with family. How about you? Same here. Sometimes a cozy Christmas at home is the best. Absolutely. It's all about the warmth of home and the people you love. Couldn't agree more. Well, I better start planning my Christmas menu. Thanks for the chat. No problem. Let me know if you need any recipe ideas. Wishing you a fantastic Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Lesson 76. Let's talk about New Year plans. Hey, have you thought about our New Year's plans? Yeah, I'm thinking of going to a party. How about you? That sounds fun. I'm also planning to attend a celebration. Where's the party you're thinking of? It's at a friend's place. They're hosting a small get-together. You should join. Sure, I'd love to. What time does it start? Around 8 p.m. It's going to be a casual gathering with music and snacks. Perfect. I'll be there. By the way, any specific resolutions for the new year? Well, I'm planning to learn a new skill. Maybe start a language course or something. Nice. I was thinking of hitting the gym regularly. You know, get in shape. That's a great resolution. We could be gym buddies. Absolutely. It's always better to have a workout partner. What about travel plans for the new year? I haven't decided yet. Maybe a short trip to the mountains or a beach getaway. How about you? I'm thinking of exploring a new city. Maybe a weekend trip to a nearby place with interesting attractions. 
Sounds like a plan. Do you have any favorite New Year traditions? Well, I usually make a list of goals for the year. It helps me stay focused. That's a good idea. I might give it a try. What about New Year's Eve dinner? Any preferences? I'm up for anything. How about trying a new restaurant in town? Sure, I'm in. I heard there's a new Italian place that's really good. Sounds delicious. Let's make a reservation. Do you usually stay up until midnight on New Year's Eve? Yeah, I like to watch the fireworks and welcome the new year. What about you? Same here. It's a nice way to start the year with positive vibes. Agreed. And of course, the countdown is always exciting. What's your favorite part of New Year's celebrations? I love the festive atmosphere and spending time with friends and family. It's all about joy and togetherness. Absolutely. I also enjoy reflecting on the past year and looking forward to new opportunities. Have you bought any gifts for the occasion? Not yet. I was thinking of getting some small, thoughtful gifts for my close friends. That's thoughtful indeed. I might get some festive decorations for the party. What do you think? Great idea. It'll add to the celebratory vibe. I'll bring a bottle of champagne too. Perfect. A toast to the new year. Do you have any favorite New Year's songs? I like the classic ones. Auld Lang Syne is a must for me. What about you? Yeah, that one's a classic. I also enjoy some upbeat tunes to keep the energy high. Got a playlist in mind? Not yet, but I can put one together. Any song suggestions? How about some lively pop and dance tracks? Something to keep the party going. Sounds like a plan. I'll make sure to include those. By the way, do you have any superstitions or customs for New Year's? Not really. I just try to stay positive and embrace the good vibes. What about you? Same here. I believe in starting the year with a positive mindset. Let go of the past and welcome new beginnings. Wise words. Let's make this new year memorable. Do you have any favorite memories from past celebrations? Hmm, I think my favorite was when we had a surprise party for a friend. The joy on their face was priceless. That sounds heartwarming. I hope this year brings more such moments. Any specific goals for our New Year's party? Just to have a blast and create happy memories. And, of course, capture some photos for the album. Definitely. Let's make it a night to remember. I'm looking forward to celebrating with you. Likewise. It's going to be a fantastic start to the new year. Cheers to new beginnings. Lesson 77 a Guide to New Year's Resolutions Hey, have you thought about your New Year's resolution? Yeah, I'm thinking of getting more organized. You know, tidy up my place and stuff. That sounds good. I'm planning to stay fit, maybe start jogging or something. Oh, exercising more is on my list too. We could be workout buddies. Definitely. Let's motivate each other. What else are you planning? Well, I want to learn a new skill, maybe cooking. How about you? Nice. I'm aiming to improve my language skills. Maybe pick up a new language. That's ambitious. I was considering that too. Which language are you thinking? Probably Spanish. It's useful and sounds fun to learn. What's your choice for cooking? Italian cuisine. I've always wanted to master pasta and pizza recipes. Yum. Let's plan a cooking night together and, you know, practice our languages. Great idea. We'll kill two birds with one stone. By the way, any travel plans for the year? I wish. But for now, I'll explore locally, discover hidden gems in our city. How about you? Same here. Maybe a weekend getaway or two. Save some money, you know? Totally get that. Budgeting is on my resolution list too. Cut down on unnecessary expenses. Smart move. I should do that too. Maybe start a savings plan for future travels. Exactly. 
Speaking of plans, any career goals for the new year? I'm aiming for a promotion, so I need to up my game at work. How about you? I'm thinking of taking a course to enhance my skills. Maybe move up the career ladder. Nice continuous improvement. We're on the same page. What about reading? Any book goals? Reading more is on my list too. I want to finish at least one book per month. How about you? I'm aiming for a book a month as well. We could recommend each other some titles. Perfect. I've got a list already. Changing gears a bit? Any bad habits you want to kick? Yeah, I need to cut down on procrastinating. It's affecting my productivity. And you? Less screen time for me. Too much social media is not doing any good. We can help each other stay disciplined. Agreed. Support is crucial. Oh, and I want to volunteer more this year. Give back to the community. That's a wonderful resolution. Count me in for some volunteer work too. What about family time? I want to spend more quality time with my family. It's important. And you? Same here. Maybe plan a family vacation. Strengthen those bonds, you know? Absolutely. Hey, do you have any hobbies you want to pick up or revive? I used to play the guitar, so I want to get back into that. And you? Painting has always intrigued me. I might take up some art classes. Want to join? Sure, why not? It could be a fun and creative way to spend our free time. Any movies or TV series on your watch list? I want to catch up on classic movies, expand my film knowledge. And you? I'm into documentaries lately, so more of those on my list. We can have movie nights. Sounds like a plan. By the way, do you have any health goals? I'm thinking of more sleep and less junk food. Sleep is crucial, agreed. I'm aiming to drink more water and cut down on sugary drinks. Small steps, you know. Definitely. Small changes can lead to big improvements. And hey, any personal development goals? Building my self-confidence is on my radar. I want to step out of my comfort zone. How about you? Public speaking is my challenge. I want to conquer that fear. We could practice together. Absolutely. Supportive buddies, remember? Oh, and any environmental goals? Reduce my carbon footprint. Maybe start composting. And you? Less plastic usage for me. Carry a reusable water bottle and shopping bags. Every little bit helps. True. Small changes make a big impact. Hey, speaking of impacts, any goals for social media? I want a more positive online presence. Share uplifting content. And you? I'm cutting down on mindless scrolling. It's a time waster. More intentional use of social media. Good call. Let's keep each other in check. Lastly, any lessons from last year that you want to carry forward? Patience and resilience. Those were my key takeaways. And you? Gratitude and mindfulness. Appreciating the present moment. Let's make 2023 a year of growth and positivity. Absolutely. Cheers to that, my friend. Lesson 78, My New Year Journey. Hey, have you made any plans for New Year's yet? Yeah, I'm thinking of going on a short trip. How about you? That sounds cool. I'm also considering a getaway. Where are you thinking of going? I was thinking of visiting a charming town nearby. What about you? Nice choice. I was leaning towards a beach destination. Sun, sand, and all that. Oh, that sounds relaxing. When are you planning to leave? I'm aiming for the 30th so I can welcome the new year in a different place. What about you? I was thinking of leaving on the 31st, just in time for the countdown. How are you getting there? I'll probably drive. It's not too far, and I like the idea of a road trip. How about you? I don't have a car, so I'll take the train. It's convenient, and I can enjoy the scenery. True. Trains are pretty comfortable. Where are you staying? 
I found a cozy Airbnb. It's affordable and close to the town center. How about you? I booked a hotel by the beach. I splurged a bit, but I think it's worth it for the view. That sounds amazing. What are your plans for New Year's Eve? I'm hoping to find a beach party. Celebrating under the stars sounds perfect. How about you? I'm more into a cozy vibe, maybe a local pub with some live music. What about activities during the day? I want to explore the local markets and maybe try some water sports. How about you? I'm thinking of visiting historical sites and taking a long walk in the town. Do you have any travel tips? Definitely pack some sunscreen and a good book for the road. Anything you'd recommend? A portable phone charger and some snacks for the train ride. Got any must-see places? Check out the lighthouse and the seafood joints by the beach. And you? I heard there's a beautiful old church and a charming park. What's your New Year's resolution? To travel more and experience new things. How about you? Same here. And maybe learn a new hobby. What's your favorite thing about traveling? I love meeting new people and trying local food. What about you? Exploring different cultures and capturing moments with my camera. Do you speak any other languages? Just a bit of Spanish. It comes in handy while traveling. How about you? I speak French and a bit of Italian. It helps with navigating around. What souvenirs do you usually buy? Fridge magnets and postcards. They're easy to carry. What about you? I collect local artwork and sometimes try regional snacks. Do you plan your trips in detail? I like having a rough plan, but I'm open to spontaneity. And you? I'm more of a planner. I research a lot and have an itinerary, but I leave room for surprises. What's your dream destination? I've always wanted to visit Japan. The culture and landscape seem fascinating. How about you? Australia is on my bucket list. The wildlife and the Great Barrier Reef are calling me. Any travel horror stories? Once my flight got delayed for hours, but that's about it. How about you? I lost my luggage once, and it took two days to find it. Not fun at all. What's your favorite travel memory? Exploring a hidden waterfall in Costa Rica. The serenity was unforgettable. And yours? Watching the sunrise over the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It was magical. Do you prefer solo travel or with company? I enjoy both, but there's something liberating about solo travel. And you? I like the company. Sharing experiences makes the trip more memorable. How do you deal with jet lag? I try to adjust my sleep schedule a few days before. And you? I power through the first day, stay active, and adjust gradually. What's your go-to travel snack? Nuts and granola bars. They're easy to carry and keep me energized. How about you? Fruits and a good sandwich. Healthy and satisfying. What's the most challenging part of travel for you? Probably the language barrier at times. How about you? Getting used to different time zones messes with my sleep. What do you miss the most when you're away? Family and home-cooked meals. And you? My pets and the comfort of my own bed. What's your advice for a first-time traveler? Be open-minded. Try new things and don't overpack. And you? Plan ahead, but leave room for spontaneity. And always have a backup charger. What's your next travel destination? I'm thinking of exploring the mountains next. And you? A road trip along the coast sounds appealing. Well, hope you have a fantastic New Year's trip. You too. Safe travels and enjoy the adventure. Lesson 79, Exploring Future Careers. Hey, have you thought about our future careers lately? Yeah, I have. It's kind of overwhelming, isn't it? Definitely. 
What are you considering? Well, I'm leaning towards something in business, maybe marketing. Marketing sounds interesting. Why do you like it? I enjoy creativity and communication, so I think it suits me. What about you? I'm thinking about teaching. I like helping people learn and grow. Teaching is noble. Have you thought about where you want to teach? Probably in a school, but I'm open to other options too. How about you? Any specific area in marketing? Not sure yet. Maybe digital marketing, but I'm still exploring. That's smart. It's good to keep your options open. Yeah, I want to gain some experience first. Do you have any teaching experience? Not much, just some volunteer work, but I plan to get a teaching degree. That's a good plan. I'm looking at internships for marketing experience. Internships can be valuable. How's the job market for marketing? It's competitive, but I think it's growing with digital trends. Teaching is stable, but the pay varies by location. Yeah, that's something to consider. What's your preferred age group to teach? I like working with teenagers, but I'm open to younger kids, too. I can see you with teenagers. I'm not sure about the age group in marketing. That's okay. You'll figure it out. What about work hours? Any preferences? Flexible hours would be nice, but I'm not too picky. You? I'm used to the 9 to 5 schedule, but I'd prefer a school with summers off. Summer off sounds great. Any worries about teaching? Managing a class can be challenging, and not every student is easy to teach. I can imagine. Marketing can be stressful with deadlines and targets. Stress is part of any job, I guess. Are you concerned about job security? A bit but marketing seems in demand these days. Teaching is usually stable, but budget cuts can be a concern. I hope you won't face that issue. How about benefits like health insurance? Most teaching jobs offer good benefits, including health insurance. What about marketing? It varies, but some companies offer decent benefits too. That's good to know. How important is salary for you in your career choice? It matters, but job satisfaction is more important. How about you? I agree. A good work-life balance is my priority over a high salary. Same here. Do you have any mentors guiding you in your career choice? Not really. Just some teachers who inspired me. How about you? I've talked to a few professionals in marketing. They've given me insights. That's smart. Networking can be valuable. Any dream companies in mind? I'd love to work for a creative agency. How about you? Maybe a progressive school or a school abroad. Have you considered further education? I'm thinking about a master's in marketing eventually. You? A master's in education might be in my future, too. What about work-life balance? It's a priority. I don't want to be all work and no play. You? Absolutely. Life outside work is important for me as well. I'm glad we're on the same page. It's essential to be happy in our careers. Totally agree. It's a big part of our lives, after all. So, what's the next step for you in pursuing teaching? I'm researching teaching programs and planning to apply soon. How about you? I'm working on my resume and looking for marketing internships. It sounds like we're both on the right track to our future careers. Yes, let's keep pushing forward. Our futures are looking bright. Lesson 80, Winter Daily Life Stories Hey, it's really chilly today, isn't it? Oh, I know. Winter is definitely here. I had to wear a heavy coat this morning. Yeah, me too. Do you enjoy winter, though? Well, I like the snow, but I'm not a fan of the cold. I get that. It can be a hassle to bundle up all the time. 
True, but I do love cozy evenings at home. Me too. Hot cocoa, blankets, and a good book. That's the best. And let's not forget about the holidays. Do you have any plans? Yes, I'm visiting family for Christmas. How about you? I'm hosting a small New Year's Eve gathering at my place. Sounds like fun. What do you do to stay warm during winter? I have a space heater and wear layers indoors. That's a good idea. I rely on my trusty electric blanket. Ah, cozy. Do you enjoy winter sports? I've never tried skiing or snowboarding, have you? No, but I like ice skating at the rink. Ice skating is great. I go sometimes with my kids. Speaking of kids, do you have any winter parenting tips? Keep them dressed warmly and make snowmen together. Snowmen are a must. We love building them too. Do you face any winter driving challenges? Yes, the roads get icy. I drive slower and cautiously. I use winter tires to have better traction. That's smart. How about winter illnesses? I make sure to get the flu shot and wash my hands often. Good habits. Hot soup helps me when I'm feeling under the weather. It's a comforting remedy for sure. Have you ever gone winter camping? No, that sounds a bit extreme for me. You? I did it once, but I prefer cozy cabins in winter. Cozy cabins sound delightful. I love a good winter movie night too. Yes, popcorn and a movie make for a perfect winter evening. How about winter fashion? Any favorite winter outfits? I love wearing scarves and woolly hats. You? Coats and boots are my winter must-haves. What's your favorite thing about winter overall? I'd say the holiday spirit and spending time with loved ones. That's beautiful. I enjoy the peace and quiet of snowy mornings. Snow can be quite magical. I agree. And the feeling of warmth when you come back inside after being in the cold. Ah, that's so true. It makes winter worth it. What's your least favorite thing about winter? Probably the shorter days. It gets dark so early. I understand. It can be a bit gloomy. But the anticipation of spring keeps me going. Spring is just around the corner. Can't wait. Me neither. It'll be here before we know it. Well, stay warm and enjoy your winter season. You too. Have a wonderful winter, my friend. Thanks, and take care. You too. Bye. Lesson eighty-one: The Magic of Christmas Wishes. Hey, have you thought about what you want for Christmas this year? Yeah, I've been dreaming of a new laptop. Mine's getting really slow. That sounds nice. I'm hoping for a cozy sweater, something warm for the winter. A sweater is a great idea. I also need one for the chilly days. I was thinking of going to the electronics store during the holiday sales. Laptops are usually discounted. That's a smart plan. Maybe I'll join you. I could use a tablet for reading. Perfect. We can check out the deals together. Speaking of deals, I wish for a new camera. The holiday discounts might make it more affordable. A camera would be fantastic. You could capture all the holiday moments. Exactly, and I've been practicing my photography skills, so it would be perfect. I hope you get it. I'm also hoping for a new set of kitchen utensils. Mine are quite old. Practical choice. A good set makes cooking so much easier. And you? What's your big wish? Well, I've been eyeing a good pair of running shoes. I want to start jogging in the mornings. That's a healthy wish. I might join you. Some exercise wouldn't hurt. It's never too late to start. And you? Any other wishes? I wouldn't mind a good book. I've been wanting to read more lately. 
Books make excellent gifts. What genre are you into? Mostly fiction, but I'm open to suggestions. How about you? I love mystery novels. Maybe a good detective story for the holidays. Sounds intriguing. Let's exchange book recommendations after Christmas. Deal. By the way, have you seen those smart home devices? I'm thinking of asking for one. Like a smart thermostat or lights? That's a modern wish. Yeah, it would make things more convenient. What about you? I've been eyeing a new coffee maker. A good cup of coffee is a must for me. Ah, a coffee enthusiast. I hope you get the perfect one. Thanks. I'm sure Santa has something special in store for us. I'm counting on it. Hey, do you think we'll have a white Christmas this year? I heard there might be snow. Fingers crossed. It would make everything more magical. Definitely. I can already imagine us sipping hot cocoa by the fireplace. That sounds like a perfect Christmas scene. Oh, and I hope for a set of cozy blankets. Cozy blankets are a must. I might add that to my wish list too. Great minds think alike. What about festive decorations? Anything specific you want? I need some new ornaments for the tree. The more, the merrier. Agreed. I love the idea of a tree filled with memories and sparkling lights. It really brings the holiday spirit to life. By the way, have you thought about a special meal for Christmas? I was thinking of trying a new recipe for roast chicken. What about you? Maybe a vegetarian feast? I've been experimenting with plant-based recipes. That sounds delicious. We should share recipes and maybe even cook together. That would be fun. And it's always better to have someone to share a meal with. Absolutely. Now, back to wishes. How about a board game for some holiday entertainment? That's a great idea. It brings everyone together. I'd love a classic like Monopoly. Monopoly can get intense, but it's so much fun. I'm in. It's a plan then. Oh, and I hope for a new set of headphones. Mine are on their last legs. Good choice. Headphones are a lifesaver, especially in a noisy household. Exactly. I can't wait to put on some holiday tunes without any disruptions. Speaking of tunes, I wish for a vinyl record player. I miss the old school sound. Vintage vibes. That's a cool wish. You can enjoy the crackling sound of vinyl. It has a unique charm, doesn't it? What about a winter getaway? Any dreams of a snowy vacation? That sounds amazing. A cozy cabin in the mountains surrounded by snow. We should plan that sometime. But for now, let's hope for a Christmas filled with joy. Agreed. I hope all our wishes come true and we have a holiday to remember. Merry Christmas in advance. May it be everything we've wished for. Merry Christmas. And here's to a fantastic new year ahead.